I approach that I may find grace. I come as super at what Yes, tonight I hear with grace. I come belle qua satente. Reka be super le qua satata. Reka boa som bimba. I come as super na sata. I come as super atata. All that my steps are directed in your commands. I come as super lata. I come as super letete. That as my learning increase, my becoming increase. I come as super letter. May I find grace tonight? A come as a vele cabarata, a copa papa papa, a come as a ve, a canqua kekaka, a rakekenke, a coporoso atete, rakaka, a capon pempe, a campe kakakata, rakakasa. May I find grace? Ale mana super, a qua, a campe nasata, a qua kakakaka, a yam pempa. May I not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. Emanasia, as I learn, help me find grace. Eko kwa era sevente eka kata kata ta akwa. I am a super lekata eka manaswata eka koboroswata eko mbombasa ara akava kata kata ta ekwa kata kata eka mbele kata ta. May I find grace. Let's all bless the name of the Lord with the fruit of our lips. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you. Hallelujah to your holy name. Hallelujah to your holy name. Holy, holy God Almighty. It's a privilege to worship you. Maker of all universe, it's an honor just to stand before you. Holy, holy God Almighty, we are praying.
maker of the universe.
Sirene, oh Nishayano Dance at the rail, we pray to you You are worthy to pray Happy your sin Sirene, oh Nishayano Dance at the rail You are worthy Be your skill, on your shame, on dance up your We praise the Lord, you are worthy, you are worthy to come in your skill.
Jesus praise. Can we celebrate Jesus one more time? <laughs> Father, we thank you. Um, it's, uh, can we have our seats together in God's presence? Quickly, we will be taking testimonies. And uh, as I call your name, you can proceed forth quickly. And Oye Wale Omolola. Anyon Wale. Anyon Wala, right? Anyon Wala, Timitope. And Oye Wale Omolola. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. I want to thank God for his faithfulness. I want to thank God for so much of his grace. I want to thank God for the life of my mom. I want to thank God because not quite long she was involved in an accident. But I want to thank God for preserving her life. I want to thank God because not quite long after then she was involved in another accident. But I want to thank God because she's alive today. I want to thank God for his favor. Like when I was rounding up my youth service, I was so scared. I was so scared, but I want to thank God because life after service has been so wonderful. I want to thank God for his goodness. I want to thank God for his blessedness. I want to thank God for his love. And I want to thank God for his mercy. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living stages. Uh, my name is Sister Lola. Firstly, I want to thank God for the journey mercy God grant to my junior sister for resuming to our new school yeah i give god all the glory for protecting her from lagos to this place god i give god all the glory i give god all the honor and secondly i want to thank god for the deliverance i receive here for god saving me because of the sickness i'm always having every month since i finished my secondary school i know what i've been facing but when i got here god i thank god because it's all, always annoying to me. I can just be going, I would just meet myself on the ground. I just give God all this. Thank God saving me from this shameful sickness in me. For the deliverance I receive here, I give God all the glory. Can we, with a grateful heart, as a church, lift up our voices and begin to give the Lord thanks for these testimonies? And I want us to know that there are much more testimonies in the house even outside the followers of the church here even with the brethren online it is not everything that will be shared here so there are a lot of testimonies that happen week in week out can we lift up our voices very very dangerous ones dangerous testimonies that you cannot imagine god has been faithful to this house he has kept his word to us in this house. He has been faithful to us word. Can we lift our voices and give him thanks? Can we lift our voices we give you thanks father we give you thanks jesus and mino so gratico shut the kid up area to come and i am a low break a daily back on break it in a high for constant supplies even for the ark of preservation he nicked all sabina maka it does not happen like that every day it doesn't happen like that everywhere he look who shot the cable now god has been faithful to us and me like a brand as for preservations and me like a many of us travel back 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 and forth sometimes six four five eight travels within a week many covers one person but the lord has been faithful for his preservation our father travels many times even within a week but we have always received him back in gladness nothing to cry about nothing to mourn about many of you travel also Kiarua Sekura Sina Makesho Takai Katombre Gedina and Inima Sobredish Kabula Tai. Even for personal supplies that you have received, Ilebra Kabenama Shiataka. Many of you came here not having a sponsor, but it has been the Lord. Irua Shekaus in Ate and Mina Kabra Dabina. We give you thanks. 
with a grateful heart, with a heart of praise. We are not in great. We are not in great. Ebila brakabanai. Elia bashakta kame na dosia takai. Emina kaboria takama na matiana. We may not have done well enough over time to count our blessings, but we choose to do it now. Merua shekabanai, and we say thank you. We say thank you, Father. Marosa baba biashat. Abaruas kapana mai. Allah brakaba biashat takabai. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. And forever you are God. Oh, we bless you, Lord. You are holy God. And forever you are God. And forever you are God. Bless you, Lord. You are holy. heart we say thank you for all this that you have done for us we say thank you and in Jesus name we have given thanks amen all right quickly it's time to package our titan offerings however before that can we can we have the slides of the ark of preservation the Lord has been faithful to us over the months and supplies have been coming in every now and then. And I want to say thank you for your heart of love and your sacrificial heart to give towards this project. We want to say that the Lord bless everyone who has been given and everyone who desires to but does not have the capacity, the Lord bless everyone in order to give. There's still much more to be done. There's still a lot of grants to be covered. In lieu of this, we have the uh, account details, both the dollar and the naira account details displayed for us here and here and for those online. In case you, the Lord lays it on your heart to partner with us, do well to do so. God bless us in Jesus' name. I believe we have our offerings and tithes packaged. Okay, so we may rise to our feet as we. It is time to give unto our God, who is the Lord. So, can we together take our reading? Giving time is honor time, and honor time, God seeks honor. So, we respond by giving, knowing that it deserves it, and that it will be greatly rewarded. So as I give today, God is honored. I am greatly rewarded. So I give gratefully, honorably, cheerfully, and with the expectation that the reward comes. God bless us. In Jesus' name, can we drop our offerings with a heart of honor?
to him in this season and that is why we have come to raise a sound to the Lord first that it takes over from our hearts and our souls and that our devotion be unto him and then we want to also ask him for a drawing that he keeps holding our ends that we won't be able to ever let go of him that even no matter what presents itself at us and make us want to get distracted from God, we will hold on to him forever. My heart, my soul, please take control, Jesus. And day by day as I follow through, let my devotion be unto you, Jesus.
initiating prayers a time came in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ where in the midst of a supply of spiritual needs physical needs showed up the Bible said that his disciples said to him, Lord, let us send them away. Unknown to the disciples, the same God who feeds spiritually does not lack in the potential to supply physical needs. So instead of being sent away, Jesus said, sit them down. I came with an extra burden tonight. I need this sound to be a little bit better. I want to lift a cry unto the Lord for our families. And while this burden began to work in my spirit, I got a testimony this morning that um, has stirred my faith. A few weeks ago, I was privileged to minister at the Citadel, that's Pastor Tundibakare's church. And after the meeting, a young lady walked up to me and said, you said so much about prayer. I want you to mentor me in prayers. So I gave her a few um, instructions and um, she asked that I should give her my number so that once in a while she could send me messages. So she began to send. And two days later after saying good morning to me, she's currently in 300 level in the private university running a five year course just starting 300 level. She said you spoke so much about prayer but we have problems at home. What problems? She said finances have nose dived. Um occupationally my parents are not doing very well and I'm about to drop out of this private school name withheld I know the name of the university our fees range definitely over well over half a million and there's nowhere to get the money so I told her um, you can cut your trade in prayers with this problem so start praying also, I pray for me. I say, you never learn how to pray. If you can't pray for things as ephemeral as money, you will not be able to ask him for nations. So she began to pray. And she began to pray. Once in a while, she will tell me, things are getting bad. And she will add to it, I know what you will tell me. Is that I should pray. So pray. She was in training school. So this morning, she told me, she said, now I know that God answers prayers. Because in the midst of that darkness, somebody showed up, a very distant family friend, began to communicate with the family. And in a nutshell, the financial status of the family has been lifted. And that family in the UK decided to put her on a scholarship for the rest of her academic journey. It's a scholarship that includes her fees, money for clothes, money for books and her monthly allowances I'm sure that she has the boldness to approach God for greater things in case you are in the house and you are still seeking the services of a prayer contractor I think that the current state of your family whether good or bad is good enough a platform to cut your trade in prayer with 
the God who preached through his son Jesus Christ is also the God who provided and I want us to lift up our voices and ask for interventions concerning our families let me show you a verse of scripture Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 it's a very common verse of scripture call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not what God via these utterances through the lips of his prophet Jeremiah did not advertise to us was the shape of these great and mighty things but I believe because of the feedbacks I have received in prayer that there are great and mighty provisions there are great and mighty deliverances they are great and mighty interventions so tonight we want to call that same God it was God this was not Jeremiah trying to make a case for God it was God speaking through his prophet because as we cry tonight little will become much insufficiency will become abundance bondage mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ can you lift up your voice as we in the next five minutes ascend unto God with our requests and short Batonga. Ecco, ecco, 
Tanya. Let debts be paid. Let debts be paid. Let monies that have been owed come on Borokote. Let the hand of the oppressor be restrained in the name of Jesus. If I take up a rasata that I oh, open the windows, let the blessing be poured, let the blessing be poured. In Pata Maria da Brande, Yasha, on the Veletaria da Brande, let bank accounts be filled in the name of Jesus. Oh, Sante Mandeata. In Fanana Pande Rastataba, we connect families with help us. We connect families with help us. We connect families with help us. Let lost jobs be recovered. Let lost jobs be recovered in the name of Jesus. Oh, Sato Daratakatata. Monta Santa Papa Tata Repan Seletatus Ata Papa Benanda Tolia Tabai. We beat down opposition. We beat down opposition in spite of the situation in our nation. We decree plenty tonight, and by the anointing, we establish plenty, plenty in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we are prayed. In spite of that which pervades, we decree plenty. The promise from the lips of Isaac was the Lord grant you the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth. I am convinced that for many of the needs, especially concerning welfare, God has apportioned help us. And I decree in this season that help us begin to meet with, the, with those in need of help. Supplies begins to meet with needs in the name of Jesus. I hear in my spirit that there are businesses across families that have been fully scripted but because of the absence of finances they have not been able to take off. I decree tonight that a gate opens over this congregation and this gate ushers in supplies. Let every scripted business begin to attract help. I was sitting in my house and I had just finished the discussion with my wife as regards her business. What was required to move that business forward was not within reach. It was not something we could probably save even within a few months. And while I, while I instructed her to go to the room to pray, immediately she walked away from the dining room into the room I got a call from Europe and what the man of God said was my wife that's his wife just walked into their room in Europe to pray and immediately she knelt down to pray God said to his wife Reverend Tolu's wife just asked me for money so she didn't have to pray so long and then after a few discussions money was moved about half of what was required the same God who has shown up faithfully for us as a family will visit your families in his name I decree that the famine is over 
by purely supernatural means by supernatural become natural means I decree that every family represented here on site and online is supplied in the name of Jesus he says call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not we ask for the release of mind blowing miracles testimonies that can only be believed because we have things to show for their reception testimonies that uh, uh, I mean about which we if we speak men will almost not believe until they see the proofs mind blowing testimonies testimonies that will cause our eyes to break in tears of joy Amen. not from the new month but from tonight Amen. we give you praise and glory in Jesus name we have prayed Amen. you may be seated um, by way of announcement I would need to meet urgently with every leader in the house who will not be going to work by 9 a.m. on Tuesday. 9 a.m. It's just a two-hour meeting and we need to go away. Because my prayer has matured and in three weeks' time, God's servant, the apostle, Aaron Elsai, will be with us for two days. Um... It's one of my greatest miracles because I didn't need to talk to him about it. I have stopped talking to Papa about meetings. I have been waiting for the completion of the ark. But he decided to open that conversation. It's been a long time I have been with you. And I think it's time to come and strengthen your hands. We have tagged it the mandate apostolic conference and the theme is the circumcision. The circumcision. So, um, by, by tomorrow, latest tomorrow night, we should have arrived at our flyers. And by Tuesday morning, we have to discuss very deeply for just two hours so that I can focus on the ministry of the word and prayer while our leaders begin to run to ensure that that conference is delivered in three weeks time Amen so um, I expect that by tomorrow evening I receive from the prayer department a prayer schedule we are going to trust the Lord to sustain prayers towards that conference every day till that conference Amen. Amen. The last time Baba came was 2018. It was a massive shift for the house. And so we don't want to casually walk into this. We don't want to casually walk into this. I believe that God has us in mind. It's very difficult to have Papa in your, in your midst these days. Not because he does not care but because um, there is a plane that God has placed him. And then um, fortunately or unfortunately for us, we are not a, min a ministry that he's worried about. Are you with me? Um, I discussed with him a lot. He approves of... I, I, I've not had any time that Papa told me, told you, don't do that thing again. Not once that, that, since I met him. Not once. And it's not like he doesn't see what I'm doing. But God has gifted me lenses that observe him keenly. And so I have been able to live my life in near perfect, um, near perfect replication. Grace is very wide apart, but his motions have been observed in detail. His grace. May you also be gifted those lenses. So, 
he will be here in the company of um, a few of our the big men in our spiritual family. I'm still trusting him for one extra miracle so that we'll have a face in town that I've longed to have. Um, he will show us, miss. So that Dami will need to adjust his flyer and bring him one extra face that I'm hoping for. All right. Um, all right. So, 9 a.m. on Tuesday, we will be there. Here for the meeting. We want to sustain our communications on the subject hosted the presence of the Christ and um, we still await the sermons about four sermons from two weeks ago and then um, we await the sermons from Elori Monday and Tuesday last week um, is Jerry have you posted them no the ones I sent to you okay so we have the four sermons from the meeting at the Korodu. Um, they are already with Minister Jerry. He will, um, I'm sure by tonight into tomorrow morning, they will be up for us to listen to. I have seen God again and again alter my emphasis. So it was um, a revival labor. I started with... Um, the subject the summons to the, of the desperate the cry of, the call of the desperate and even though I had the sermon put together I had to minister um, on the subject the need for a seed Christian my emphasis was around the consciousness that while all of us have become alive to the need to see our territories revived there is a protocol that Jesus in teaching about the operations of the kingdom established in Matthew chapter 13 via two parables he began with the parable of the sower and in the parable of the sower um, it was the word of God that was sown and the word of God yielded harvest in line with the nature of the heart that received it. Are you with me? But there was another sowing parable in Matthew chapter 13, which is often called the parable of the wheat and the tares. That's from about verse 14. In the parable of the wheat and the tares, the seed there is not the word of God the seed there are the children of the kingdom. It means that when God has a territory in view, the first thing he does is to administer the word of faith in the frame of that which we see clearly explained in scriptures in Romans chapter 10. And when a man receives that word and believes, there is an internal working that is initiated in that man to bring that man into a place where God can replant him in a territory. Because what God wants to do in winning the territories is that he wants to plant believers and reap a harvest after the order that the believers have entered into. And so there was one question that rang so much on Friday night in the Korodu. It was the question, if God plants you in the territory, would you be pleased that he reaps many after your current kind? How many people will be fine? That if God uses what you have become as a template of replication and then he replicates people after your kind in Ubumo, so would, the, would this place look like the kingdom of God? If we cannot answer that question, it means that it is in vain we ask for the reins of revival. Because there are two reigns advertised in scripture. There is a former reign which does not need your prayers. Every time God sends the former reign, it occasions flashes of what the harvest will look like. 
and it is God's signal of saying now I need seed until the seed is planted the latter rain does not become necessary are you with me so the Bible says in Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1 ask for the rain in the time of the latter rain how do you know the time of the latter rain when God has found the seed and when his seed has entered the earth the latter rain is supposed to be the rain that unlocks the harvest so God is looking for seed believers when God gives you a picture of what of the kind of man he wants to see in the territory your first assignment is not to pray for the emergence of that man your first assignment is to labor with the Holy Spirit to become that man amen my second sermon is titled a letter from Jesus and what we did was to attempt to extray the church in Ikorodu and by extension the church in Southwest and by further extension the church in Nigeria um, using the lenses with which Christ viewed the church of the Laudations. One of the things that we sat with so strong in Revelation chapter 3 was that we found out that in trying to establish a common um, structure for the communications of Jesus to all of the churches, you will not be able to bring the church of the Laudations into that frame of reference because it was a church that Jesus had no commendation for. As a matter of fact, in naming the church, there was a way Jesus named it that he did not name any other church because for the others, it was the church in Ephesus, it was the church in Philadelphia, it was the church in Smyrna, it was the church in Thyatira, but for the Laodicean church, it was the church to the church of the Laodiceans. That church had become one with the system that it had lost its identity in Christ. And so, what we perceive is that Jesus is writing a letter to the church of the Nigerians. A church that currently bears all the signatures of the average Nigerian who is not renewed. It was a point by point classific um, merger and then we ended with the admonition of the Christ inviting us to come to that place where we could buy. That was morning session yesterday. In the evening I began with a call to return to foundations. That while there is a labor to begin to apprehend what is above the reason why there is difficulty to win what the lord is currently advertising to us is that many people who are trying to touch new have not been established foundational i know you want to be praying for 12 hours but you don't understand prayer so there is a call to go back to the foundations that we abandoned not just as people in pursuit of the christ but also as teachers those who have been called to lead it is not it is it does not believe to you as a teacher of scriptures to teach little things that's why even our conference is called the circumcision so i was admonishing the many pastors that came how that they needed to go back to subjects like common salvation like sanctification like consecration like conversion like total devotion like holiness and purity because strong men are made out of foundations my last sermon was titled the fellowship that gives life and my emphasis there is an emphasis that I believe that we all need to come into it was that there are things that were not designed by God to be delivered by impartations. They were delivered, we were designed to find delivery as a byproduct of your personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. That was the design. So that there are things that you are supposed to come into in prayers, in fastings, in sacrificial living, in pure living. Unfortunately, a generation in their bid to circumvent process has built an altar around suddenly they walk into a meeting and then they want to receive what they will have received by process and we established it strongly that if you live like that 
one of the privileges that you'll be deprived or you'll be denied is the ability to communicate what you have received to another generation because what one generation gives to the other generation it gives to them by process so if you study scriptures and see the patriarchal flow you will find out that every communication came with a set of consecrations may god grant us understanding so the messages will be out i know shortly please find time to listen to them my spiritual father ministered in lekki on friday night and as busy as i was i joined the meeting so i've listened to the sound he ministered yesterday evening in lekki i have listened to the sermon the one I have not listened to is the one that he did this morning. And it's because I had to align my heart with this delivery. May God help us. The hand of the diligent, the Bible says, shall shall what? Shall bear rule. It means if you work hard, you will be in dominion. Um, amen. All right. So I have a charge for this service. And I have titled it Laboring for Rest. Laboring for Rest. It's just something that the Lord is working in my heart and instructed me to make it public so that we will be many that journey therein. So tonight we receive your instructions with thanksgiving. Incline our hearts unto understanding. Send us help from your holy place. In Jesus name we have prayed. I believe that many of us by sustained communications from this podium and the many other um, podiums that we source spiritual nourishment from have subscribed into the school of scriptures. In saying that, what I mean is that I believe that seated before me tonight and listening online are a people who have made an oath to live their lives from the pages of scriptures so I believe that all of us are students of the Bible if you have been a student of the Bible you will have found out that the Bible um, gives you or, or gives God the privilege to invite the one who comes seeking God unto many things it's like an invitation that has no name to it. An invitation that becomes personalized because you chose to fellowship in it. Invitations unto prophecies. Invitations unto promises. Invitations unto unveilings that the mystical might become revelations from God. However, Beyond these invitations in scriptures, it is wisdom that the believer gives attention to the instructions and the admonitions of scriptures. The word of God is also designed to communicate divine instructions. And one of the reasons why it is so is that this book is the book of the kingdom. Every kingdom thrives on established laws, principles, and protocols. And the kingdom of God is not different. While someone may quickly want to say, Oh, pastor is trying to administer legalism. There is a clear difference between the administration of the legal system of God in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the difference does not lie along the path of 
rule and no rule. It also does not lie along the path of um, old rule and new rule. It actually lies along the paths of same rule but different writers or different writing instruments and different writing parts. So that in the Old Testament, what God did was to by his own fingers write on a tablet of stone. In the New Testament, the ink and the pen is one. It's the Holy Ghost. And the platform or the parchment upon which the laws of God are written are on the fleshy tables of the human heart. So that you will not need to wake up to read, Thou shalt not steal, before you know that you should not steal. But the spirit that writes upon your hearts becomes the spirit of the law of God. And in fellowship with him, there is a communication of that which God requires of you. So that God can make bold in New Testament experience that utterance that he made in the Old Testament that it has been revealed unto you, O son of man, what God requires of you because it has been embedded in the spirit of the law. Amen. So, the Bible is filled up with instructions and it is filled up with admonitions, subtle calls to duty. For in this instant, this in our adherence, let me put it that way, to these instructions and admonitions lie the fulfillments of the earlier invitations that I said. So when God invites unto a prophecy, invites unto a promise, invites unto a revelation, what makes those revelations, prophecies and promises find fulfillment is that a man chooses the part of alignment by adhering to the demands of God in his instructions and the admonitions that are in scriptures. It is in this wise that I have come tonight to admonish us that there is a labor that we need to engage so that we can enter into what God defines as rest for this season. Hebrews chapter 4 and I would bore you a little by reading 11 verses let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not been mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise and God did rest the seventh day from all his works and in this place again if they shall enter into my rest seeing therefore it remained that some must enter therein somebody say some and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited, he measured out a certain day saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. In a summary, there is a rest after the rest. Amen. Let's go on. 
For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works. Meaning that every time you see a man engage in his own works, a labor that is separate from that which has been accomplished in Christ, it is proved that that man has not entered into his rest. When your Christian experience captures such um, register as um, trying, trying, I'm trying to please God. I'm trying to be a Christian. I'm trying to do good works. It means that you are still about your works and because you have not ceased from your works, you have not entered into the current shape of God which is the cessation from his own works. Verse 11. Let us therefore, or let us labor therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Now, while somebody may be saying, I believe, I believe, I believe. The sin of unbelief as advertised in the Old Testament had a major expression. And the major expression was a second sin that we refer to as the sin of disobedience. Generally speaking, every unbeliever is a disobedient person. It means that what God proposes cannot be apprehended as truth. And so a man chooses a path of existence that is contrary to the one that God has chosen. So the unbeliever and the disobedient are actually like Siamese twins. They are distinctively different expressions, but they are intricately bound to themselves. Are you with me? Let me just bring a few words and then we can keep moving for tonight. The Lord began to reveal to me that the church needs to come into the consciousness of what defines the rest of God. And he defined this using two terms. He said, my rest is my present revelational and um, positional coordinates. There is a revelation that is stemming from God now. A revelation of his will, a revelation of his current intention, a revelation of his current activity. His intentions are larger than his activities. His intentions are hosted in his will. Are you with me? So God may want to give the young lady a baby. That's his intention. Because his will is to, make, is to use that baby to make a name for himself. So he assumes an intent. Give her a baby so that the will can be fulfilled. But you know that even when God gives people babies, even in the giving of Jesus, the baby must run for nine months. So you will also need to begin to visualize a chronological set of activities. At a point, what God will be doing is getting the lady pregnant. At another point, what God will be doing will be managing the um, complexities of the first trimester. After a while, another activity of God to fulfill his will may be to begin to open gates of provision for that family so that when the baby comes, the baby survives. Are you with me? So, within the, in the bid to fulfill the intentions of God, which is a, sub, um, a subset of his ultimate will, God engages in a lot of activities and these three things I just explained, the will of God, the intentions of God, and the chronological movement across the activities of God are designed to be hosted in what we call his present revelational coordinate. Two, 
there is a place where God is in the now. That is his positional coordinate. Are you with me? The man who has entered into the rest of God is one who has his two feet in the center of God's revelational coordinate and his positional coordinate. You are where God is and you are consciously engaged in what God is doing as regards his intent and his ultimate will. Are, are you still confused? Uh, wave your hand. Thank you. Come, me, my Lord. Holy Spirit, help me now. My will, based on the wave of your hands, is to ensure that you understand what I am communicating on behalf of God. Is that well understood? In fulfilling that will, I have options. One of the options is to repeat exactly everything I have said. And in case I cannot verbally recover them, I can ask that the media team replace everything I have said. So amongst many wills, I will sit down, among many parts of fulfilling that will, I will sit down with one path. That path defines my intention. Are you with me? So, when I told him to stand up, his standing is a communication of what I intend, the process I intend to engage to fulfill the ultimate will which is explaining to a point where you will understand. Are you with me? Now, I can now say, Emmanuel, take two steps forward. I may be asking him to take two steps forward because I want him to be proximate, to be close to where you are. That closeness does not explain anything to you. But there are steps that I am carrying out so that ultimately, if I accumulate all of my steps together, um, you will have been able to understand. He has given me a simpler one. Sit down. When you get home tonight, via the movement of your bowels, you will come about a will, which will be to put food in your stomach so that you don't go to bed with an empty stomach. Yes or no? That's your will. I will eat tonight. Because God has shown mercy and because of the prayer that we have prayed, he will show mercy. Many of us will have more than one option of what to eat tonight. Amen. Remember that those many options are only supposed to be different routes by which you can fill your stomach. Am I right? Good. So, in case you settle with rice, in trying to fulfill that intention, which is to eat rice, there are many things that we need to do. Measure rice or just, you know, just pack rice. You will need to find a power source, whether it's, a, it's by gas or by kerosene or by electricity or by coal, or by wood, or by sawdust. You will need to find a light source that can generate heat. You will need to find a container that will play host to the rice. And the last time I checked, they don't use petrol to cook rice. Even fried rice needs to fellowship with water. Are, are you with me? I used to think that fried rice was just, you fry it inside oil. If you do it that way, it's not fried rice you are eating. We don't have a name for it because it's not a normal way to approach rice. So each of these activities that you are carrying out is to fulfill your intention, which will be a gate to fulfilling your will. You still don't understand with your hand. Okay. I'm helped. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So, all of these things that I listed from the will to eat and the intention to settle with rice and these activities are captured within what we call revelation. So that if I give you details about everything, 
you will travel effectively from my will to my intention to my to the activities and very soon you are going to be eating rice God functions in that same manner and the man who has come to the consciousness of what the will of God is of what his part of execution is which I have called his intention or his intended part of fulfillment and the activities are does not need to struggle that man has nothing to do with such words as confusion life becomes one that is lived with precision because you know what is next whether you are a master in cooking rice and the masters don't visit the pot too many times what shows that you are a novice is that you go there too many times you don't know how much water you need to cook the rice so you keep topping it topping it topping it and you keep ingesting partially cooked rice because only your teeth can tell you that the rice is cooked the masters can they understand te rice texture and they know okay for these three cups I need half of this thing and they can go to sleep and time themselves that in 20 minutes it will be cooked and you will not hear ta once once you hear ta it means you are, you are, you are a novice the will of God can be known intricately like that when you find a man who knows that and applies himself to it that man will be moving through life like one whose head is on a pillow is at rest nothing moves him nothing what is concerned about is the next item on the activity an activity that we didn't think was going to so when this other guy came and said i'm cooking beans you're cooking beans i said well, you're not cooking beans this guy is cooking beans he said this is my own beans said, but there's one other guy in that third room <laughs> who has also been cooking beans here because he's the one who has been seen well that other guy was a good person he didn't eat the beans he was waiting to be challenged and that beans was half thin to two you are the one that put it on fire i'm the one that cooked it so by the time all of us he brought up the argument all of us felt that his argument was a sane argument so this guy does not have food but he has cooked the food so well that's how they sorted it but because of the proximity of these two pots it was also possible that the real owner of the beans that was tending his own may have been pouring curry and thyme into the wrong beans. It's possible. That he had it all laid out, but because he was not conscious that there is a position of acceptability, just as there is a revelation that, um, that establishes inacceptable existence, he will have wasted his time. Because what he will find out is that his own beans will dry, it will burn, and like we used to scream in school, we we'll cry out that somebody is offering burnt of. He will not know that his own beans is the burnt of. So there are things that we can be doing that show that we have full revelation, but we're doing them in the wrong place. So it is a fellowship of the possession of God's revelational coordinates and his positional coordinates that brings a man into the rest of God. You need to ask your neighbor now, are you in the rest of God? Because that positional um, coordinate also has a time quotient. So that so come you may God may flash a damn cell to you. Are you in a relationship now? God may flash a damn cell to you even now now. And you may begin to use your next two years to pursue that damn cell. Not knowing that your next two years were supposed to be used to do something else. So that when you meet that damn cell, if you had saved all your money for two years, there are things you will have possessed that will have made that more comfortable than going to use all your money to buy meat pie and what else do they buy? Eh? And flowers and, and body sprays that the lady can currently buy for herself. It will not be wrong based on the perspectives of someone who does not know your timings. He will say you are a kind man. 
but before God, you will be termed unreasonable because you are not functioning within the time frames of an activity that was truly revealed to you. So there are people who have revelation, but they don't have rest. Because they are laboring outside the boundaries of their location in time and in physical location. In case there is someone who has found half and is looking for the other half, may God show you mercy in this service. The incomplete possession of these coordinates are designed to establish the life of a man in frustration. Yes. That is a gateway to misery. That no matter how excited the atmosphere is, you will always have reason to be depressed. And it will not be because the enemy is strong. It will be that you did not fully labor into that which will have gifted you rest. Let me close this portion of my delivery. That which defines our rest is God's current revelational and positional coordinate. There is a future. This is where I'm going. There is a future God said to me that the body of Christ was designed to come into. <coughs> Thank you. And this future to the average believer is in the future. But God said to me that that future is already in the now. There are aspirations that we feel, ah, when, by, by the time our children are old, this is what God will be doing. God told me to announce that you need to understand that some have entered because that future is now. For example, the revival is not designed in God to be an end. It's a remedial project to ensure that we have a quorum of foot soldiers, a quorum of harvesters, a quorum of kingdom proclaimers. That's why the revival is coming. That those who were recruited but have gone to sleep can be regifted life so that they can run. However, those who did not sleep are already active. Are you with me? So, if you build a monument around waiting for the revival, it's not everybody that slept. And so what we are hoping to begin to happen after the revival has started happening in certain quarters. I'm saying that future is now. I'll become a little bit more explicit. So there is a future that the body of Christ is waiting for but on God's timetable, he's already in. Though many have not labored into it. So why we think it is yet for 10 years? The reason why you think it is for 10 years was that there was a season of allocated labor that you didn't do anything. And so you have decided to judge the time frame of the fulfillment with your laxity. For example... If you need 50 hours to achieve a particular end in God and God announces to you, pray for 50 hours. Maybe he says it to five of you. And then because you have chosen to pray for only one hour per month, it means you will need 50 months to be able to achieve it. You can use your schedule for the fulfillment of the required activity to schedule when that thing will be fulfilled. But there's a man who will have achieved that thing in two days or in three days thereabout. He decides that on the first day, he does 15 or he does 20 hours. He comes on the second day because of stress. He decides to put in another 15 hours. And on the third day, he puts another 15 hours. When you come into day four, you are just clocking four hours of prayer. He has entered into the fulfillment. Are you with me? So it will not be without, it will not be because God has not opened the gate. It's that you chose sides with laxity, with laziness. When your friend was laboring, you chose not to labor. And so you have, by laxity, 
redesign your own calendar that is not captured in the original calendar of God and so what you are waiting for some people have begun to use am I saying anything I was in somewhat like a mathematics class. Now, this discussion happened between redemption camp and the battle this morning. I had to say, stop, stop, stop. And then that's between me and God. But it's like you're coming too fast. What is this thing that you're talking about? He said, many have not labored into it. So, those who lag behind become storytellers. If you had fulfilled in three days by day four, you will have found out that the people that you talk about that motivate you were not designed to walk into what you were supposed to walk to. Let me tell you what he told you. He said, from Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18, he said, son, you need to understand the concept of the def my definition of the part of the just. The Bible says, but the part of the just, and here the just is one man who is justified. The just here is also a company of justified men. Their part is designed to function this way. But the part of the just is as the shining light. And if you use newer translations, it conveys the rising of the sun that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Some translations use brighter and brighter so that the sun at 6 a.m. on a normal day is not supposed to emit as much light and as much heat as the 12 noon sun. Am I right? So the 12 noon is the perfect day when the sun reaches its zenith before it begins to descend. Let's look at verse 19. The way of the wicked. So he defines the part of the just. And he defines the way of the wicked. He says the way of the wicked is what? As darkness. They know not at what they stumble. It means that because of the darkness. The wicked seemingly happens upon all kinds of things. Because he doesn't even know what makes him trip. He speaks of the intensification of wickedness. So that today. It can be a false worshiper, like somebody that we saw his picture today. I saw a picture of a kidnapper that was apprehended in the city of Abuja. One of his pictures include a picture snapped in church, and he was a deep worshiper. He went like, <sighs> but uh, uh, when when the earth refused to cover him, he was revealed as a kidnapper. That the blings he used to wear were from a kidnapping syndicate. Where I'm going is that that person started as a false worshiper. Because the realities that he engaged in God could not find replication in him. And because of darkness, he began to stumble from place to place. Anything he fell upon became the new vice that came out of him. That's the way of the wicked. So he's saying that just as the part of the just is supposed to be a part of intensification, the way of the wicked is also supposed to be a way of intensification. If you look at our nation, Nigeria, you'll find out that the way of the wicked has obeyed this plan, this pattern. That wickedness has intensified in our nation. It has gone from daylight robbery to night, from night robbery to daylight robbery to armed robbery to hired killings and then to banditry, no, to terrorist um, invasions, and then to mass kidnappings, and then to banditry, and all kinds of vices. The question is, why is it that when we want to bring to perspective the part of the just, we always talk about Ayo Babalala? Stop to think. Because if our Babalala will be the reference of the most intensified expressions of God, if Benson, that, these were the two examples God gave to me, if Archbishop Benson in the house will be the reference for God's most intensified expression, it means that we are not on the path of the just. 
Because a part of the just ensures that a succeeding generation will, uh, will come into a more intensified expression of God than the ones that came before them. It therefore means that there are those who by the mercy of God are in, engaged in a current labor that will make them arrive in an, a dimension of expression that will dwarf what our fathers have done. The rest will be storytellers. That we read in the book that we keep shouting, where is the God of Ben Sindaosa? Not knowing that the design for expression is that the God of Isaac, right? Is supposed to be stronger in expression than the God of the apostle. I hope about that. Could it be that our generation has been evaluated in God as being an, a, a generation of slack men? Who because of labor have only stayed, who because of labor and a pseudo form of honor. You know, there's a way you can honor somebody and say, I shouldn't be better than this person. Let me just say, I'm saying that if you are on the part of the just, the light that should be forged out of the body of Christ is supposed to be stronger than what our fathers carry. That's the design. If I might ask, how many people want the oil of the apostle Ayobabaola in this building? If God was dashing it, how many people want it? Raise your hand. You, you see, you don't know what his revelational position is. How many of you want it? Raise your hand. Okay, you don't know Ayobabaola too much. Or maybe you don't like CAC. How many of you will want what rested on God's servant? The Archbishop Benson Downs. Okay, I have a few more hands. Unfortunately, the last time I checked, they don't share it. They don't share it. You see, all those strange men that come and claim mantles are liars. Their lives are too normal to possess mantles. So when they say, I came with the mantle of, tell them, if, if you mention man again, we can help some people out of false ministry. Or you can raise your hand and say, what does Katrin Kuman's mantle look like? You find out that these people are not schooled at all. They are novices in the, fac in, in the department of mantles. The question is, what label are you putting in to embody the house in case God wants to stop there? But I've come to announce to you that he didn't stop there. The spirit moved beyond that Bishop Benson Daosa. He kept them in honor, gave them a, a, a space in the kingdom. But he wants many of us to go beyond them because the wisdom measurement in Israel before Jesus showed up was Solomon. He was the wisest man that ever lived. But when Jesus showed up on the landscape, his introduction was that there is one greater than Solomon that is amongst you. If we continue in our slackness, I told them in the battle yesterday. Now, this is outside what God told me. Make sure you are not sleeping more than you are laboring. Make sure you are not eating more than you are fasting. Make sure that you are not gisting more than you are meditating. You should be able to draw the balance by yourself. You will know if your life will be ordinary or not. God is not mocked. A man will reap the things that he has sowed. When we came to town, I was sharing with them and God began to impress in my heart that I want you to raise a praying company. I told him, should I just start teaching prayer? He said, no, pray. Should I be calling them to prayer meeting? He said, no, pray. Pray secretly. If you labor well in secret, I will sow you as a seed in prayers. So somebody is saying, why are you preaching at the level you are preaching? He has told me to raise him preachers. And the way to raise him preachers, because I understand that in the movements of God, God is largely agricultural. He needs to produce a, the seed as a preacher. So I want to labor in study. I want to labor in balanced teaching so that he can have a seed to plant into the ground that will occasion a replication. Who are the agreed students here? 
I know they've taught you in class what happens to maize in the ground. But I'm sure they also taught you that you don't affect it. Are you with me? So it means that when you have done your job, scripture says it. Paul has planted. Apollo has. Who gives increase? God. It means if you, if you make yourself a seed that can be planted, God will give increase. Some of the things we are waiting for were supposed to have happened in our lives long ago. But we have not found the way of labor. The first rest that we entered into was because Jesus labored paying a price for us. One of the outworkings of the price that he paid for us is the gift of the capacity to labor. So it is grace that saves. But it is also grace that establishes your service acceptably. Are you with me? So that's the first call tonight. It is a call to labor for the rest of God. The spirit, God says to me, the spirit of our spiritual journey is a moving spirit. It means that our day was designed by God to play host to intensified expressions of God in reference to what he did in the life of the great apostle Ayobabalola and the great was an apostle Archbishop Benson Idaosa. It may not look like it but the way the part of the justice structured instructs us that the best days of the workings of God in our nation are not behind us they are in their future and so God summons a people to labor to pray when prayer has not when no summons for prayer has been given to fast when no summons for fasting has been given to give when there's no call to give to ensure that your life bears the accurate markings of one who is sacrificial because by living that way you will begin to see your life become synchronized with the timings of God and while a, a generation is telling stories you have stepped into where God currently is I want to raise a cry and then we move on tonight the cry is simple Lord help my heart into the perception of the movements of your spirit and give me the will to align with you you can pray say not there be yet four months and the harvest lift up your eyes the fields are white the fields are white it's not in two years God is waiting for a man who will labor in obedience to the dictates of the spirit a man who will labor in obedience to the dictates of the spirit as he calls I will answer as he draws my heart I will respond appropriately I refuse by laxity to elongate the seasons of waiting the Bible says the earnest expectation of creature waited patiently for the manifestations of the sons of God our nation has been long appointed unto deliverance but there is none to deliver and none cry it out restore tonight we ask of you oh God that the protocols that produce deliverance will be readministered by the instructions of your spirit and men will begin to consciously align men will begin to consciously align we wait upon you oh God we wait that in our day the sounds of deliverance will be heard that there will be an emergence of restorers before it all becomes waste still son to accurate labor still son to alignment with your spirit that as we press oh God in obedience in timeliness we will be synchronized with your time frames 
for our lives for families for territories for our nation and indeed the nations of the world tonight we ask that you will extricate us from the laxity that seeks to define our generation you will show us the way of price pain you will show us the way of cost that we may labor accurately and apprehend that for which you have laid hold on us that which you have a portion for our campuses does not have a 10 year frame does not have a two year frame now is the appointed time see the spirit of god today is the day of salvation the family can be free today yes the nation can be free today can a nation be born in a day see the lord or a people be brought forth for before zion traveled she gave birth can you raise some amongst us who will travel that there can be a burden this baby must not die sunday manana katade brenta kasta tabambo bate tonda kate sete banatelia ronde mante pante sata panta vinonta lebasa can you are waking up in us oh god can you are waking in us the oil of the children of isaka to understand the times and to know that which have a portion us to do send us help eto popon de diata skate kanta bambro katualate e papenon kada bini atakada abrando kato mestanta vemo e pakande yata papata konsatai atabrante morta bemba pate Lia Patedo, a Perata Taposa, a Stata Ben Vatinia, and the Dome, and the Dome, and the Dome, and the Dome, Itame Monte Ponte, a Fataben Bacatedo, a Saito Bale Tome and Tabai. Oh, Siba Babata Tabandela Lote Tadabanta. Yante bande rasta tan di bolda e fate babande mai. We have three more minutes to engage the great one. Oh, incline my hearts unto wisdom. Can you teach us how to number our days? Can you show us that which you have apportioned to be carried out in every day that we may be synchronized with your timelines for us? The promise was not apportioned a distant fulfillment lord we are synchronized with your spirit Sababa me ota van kanta ba montatia sabim breketele bete to mi tata bete to mi keskata bete to mi skante bolia babo baba takasta rata babilanta ayaye to bi balaba kato me ma it's time to arise unto that which is written to arise unto that which is written to arise unto that which is written. Awake, awake, thou that sleepeth. Oh, and Christ shall give you light. It's a day of activity. Let none amongst us call in weak. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. For he enables in this day. Ah, hey. Just pray, just pray, you can play. Skona manta, pranta kabose salakete ya momota. Vokenta binaske, rateko stotole, banto mi monte kobaya. Awake, 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 awake. 
this is not a time to draw back it's a day of activity lose yourself captive daughter of zion awake arise from the dust the one who was called we strengthen the one who was called we equip i am a moment Set up a bonte kete barata, astai te bale, blenten binde toria, asto mile, asto mile, asto mile, eke me monte kele mata bihanta. Side no, kalele te ke baba, ranta mamam salte be monte. Sati brata do a sate fe fe le te ta pa 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 ha a te ban te ka be sate bara rata ka pa pa ta a te mi mo te le ka e brata ba sate bi ni rata e brata ba la ta ma mo des. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We align with the movements of your spirit. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You may please be seated. What the wise will do will be to stay, to stay, to stay. When you get home, you will pick up these sounds again. You will listen to them so that you will be driven. You are behind schedule. That's what the Lord told me to say. You are behind schedule because you have not understood what was allocated to you in labor. You are behind schedule. You have lived your lives like someone who had no future. Like someone who was, who was who was at the mercy of the elements. Oh, it has I mean the Lord. Send us help. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Someone say loud amen. amen. You may please be seated. Before we alight on the subject of hosting the presence of the Christ, we want to come be established in the consciousness of receiving the presence of the Christ. Can we call us it together? Uh, no, it's not all of us. Receiving the presence of the Christ, there is the foundational requirement of reception before you can play host to. Thing, you came to church with a bag. Well, let's not search your bag. We don't have a warrant to search. But what I'm saying is that the things that your bag is currently playing host to were first received and if you want you put them in the bag are you with me is there anything in this your bag that moved from the shelf and gravitated into your bag by itself it also means that the presence of the Christ was not designed to appear in anyone it was designed to be received and so we must understand the protocols of reception John chapter 1 John chapter 1 oh thank you for your help thank you for your help in the shelter of your wings I know I am safe in the shadow of your wings Lord, I find relief 
miracles I have enjoyed is the miracle of physical strength. <laughs> ah, it's the miracle of physical strength. God has done something to my few minutes of prayer. It was something that I saw at least around me pioneered in my father. How that um, because of rest if my biological father sleeps for one hour it's like your four hours that's the kind of rest that it comes to you see daddy doesn't he's not bothered about anything are you with me so he, when he sleeps he sleeps he enters his transitions from light sleep to deep sleep is high it's fast it's because he doesn't need to navigate through the layers of anxiety may you come into that experience Amen. and that's some people say you're not resting I, I need to rest more I know and I'm making plans to rest I'm running a schedule that will ensure that I rest but I found out that the recovery of my body has been designed in this season not to happen with 8 hours sleep I can do it for less and I will still be as rested as the long sleeper it's a miracle of physical strength. I know you don't believe. But you need to ask by what means a man outran the best chariots in the city. You need to ask. And I know you just heard me say now intensification. Are you with me? That because we don't have 29 hours to do what we need to do in 24 hours, then God will need to, to manipulate time. And I believe one of the areas where he manipulates time is rest. He takes away the things that makes you take a long time before you sleep. Because we know that he giveth sleep, and I mean physical sleep, to those that are precious to him. So when he allocates that sleep, he allocates it faster than Valium. If you drink Valium now, you not sleep now. It needs some minutes to work. But, you know, you know, daddy can be talking to you. Maybe you are just about what is happening in the nation. And why are trying to say to you, ah, daddy, he's snoring already. <laughs> and you take some time to wake him up, but when he wakes up, he can go long again. I mean, in activity. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. So I used to sleep, oh, like into this morning I slept. Into yesterday morning I slept. But I know I didn't sleep as much as I would have needed to sleep. But I woke up fresher than I slept. Amen. It's the reality of a place and I trust God that will journey into that place. That's why I sang that song. And there's a place called the shadow of his wings. The knowing that you are safe makes you rest better than the one who is sleeping in anxiety. In the shadow of your wings, I find relief. You will hold me and you guide me in your righteousness. I find rest, peace of mind. Me, nothing is worrying me, honestly. The things that should worry me are not worried. I know some people are worried about the ark. Me, I'm not worried. 
It's God that will take glory over the ark. And he has taken it. Thus far, the ark has come. Where it has gotten to gives God glory. Because our kind of congregation should not be building like that. Are you with me? And so God has already taken glory. People who see me walk on the road, sometimes they gossip. I don't mean students too. Like the people around that area that are selling things. Say, that's the pastor that is building this place. And many times, I'm just in my palm slippers. And I'm just enjoying the Lord. No anxiety. Because we have not taken bank loan. And we have not borrowed from any human being. And we will not need to borrow. God has proved a point already. So it's not about to prove it. But he didn't call me to prove a point. So there's no anxiety. I found out that the banks that used to even offer people, they call it church loan. Is to build and to, to buy equipment. They have not approached me. Maybe they have listened to, because it's virtually, not, okay, let me not say that. I have many banker friends in this city now. That when I go to the bank, the banker says, ah, and she won't know. And I say, why? I say, ah, I was streaming the service now. <laughs> Virtually everywhere I walk into, I walk into a supermarket, I jump lines with ease. I stand at the back and somebody comes who not only takes me to the front but pays. Sorry, I don't know. You say, don't bother. Thank you for blessing our lives. And I found out it's no longer an Obama shortage. It's everywhere. Everywhere. Lord, you are worth serving. Because you can, you can take, you can place, you can take poor men from the dunghill and place them on thrones. That's what serving God is, especially if God is your only motivation. Let's continue. Do I have a portion of scripture, John chapter one, from verse ten to twelve? Only two portions of scripture. Okay, two, three, four, four, and then we'll be done and enter into the end. Uh, he was in the world and the world was made by him it gives us a picture of what John was referring to as the world that the world in this context helps to express creation because he said the world was made by him are you with me and the world knew him not the word know there has to do with cognitive knowledge. I had a meeting around town. Pastor Diola was in that meeting. And because my session was evening session, I decided to attend morning session. You remember? And then the chief usher of the morning session, Dami knows the place too, but I don't think she was in the meeting. You were in the meeting. I walked in casually took a seat at the back and while I was trying to even look for a good seat not in the front though, because there were spaces towards the front so that I could listen well one brother in black suit no sit down there so I quickly arranged myself because you don't fight an usher even if you are, you are important you will mess yourself up so I had to sit and I followed the meeting and when somebody saw me who had seen my face on the billboard said ha you are sitting here the person was trying to approach onto the usher to say this person is the don't do that let me stay here because in scriptures if you sit in the front you will find out that there are people more important than you so it's good to sit at the back and when they think they should bring you they bring you up so I sat at the back and I enjoyed God and I went to when I came in the, in the morning I wore native in the evening I saw that all of the speakers were wearing suits so I decided to wear suits the chief usher in the morning now saw me ha you are the one the man begged me like five times said reverend I didn't treat you well I said you didn't treat me at all so it's, it's not about being well or not now he did that three times before my session. After my session, it became more intentional. Sir, ah, what is your you? I said, You did not wrong me. 
You did not wrong me. Now, apparently the man needed prayers. There was something he saw in the session that he was trusting God for. So he now said, I was even coming to you to pray for me, but that thing that happened in Mark, it, it was, I, it, maybe I'll have worn jeans in the morning so that I will know that it's because of what I wore that did not allow me. Are you with me? The challenge in his heart, he had a name. In his heart, he had stories of the possibilities of that name. But he did not have cognitive knowledge of the person that was attached to that name. You know sometimes if you hear the sermons, you think that I'm tall like Isaac. I'm very big. That oh, This guy that used to shout, I, I had gone to NCCF on those states. When, is it Joy that was there? When they came to pick me, she was not with them, with a boss. They said, sorry, we, we are looking for, I think it was, have I had my ordination that time? What year was that? What year did she serve? 18, 19. Okay, means I was already had my ordination that time. They were looking for Reverend Tula Gola. I said, I'm the one. Ah. The guy said, you are the one that used to preach those sermons. I said, I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the one. It wasn't that like I was looking wretched, but he could not place the size and the, the size and the audacity. You know you should not be small like this and threaten a witch. Yes, your, your body size is small. You can be managed. <laughs> uh, that was how Jesus came. The, the Jewish concept of the Messiah was one who had raised an army in the wilderness or in another cave after the order of David and came with an invading force. Rode into the city and instead of staying on the streets of Jerusalem, went straight to the, not to the temple, but to the palace, evicted Herod and all of the Romans, and then restored the kingdom back to Israel. That was a kind of Messianic king that they had in mind. Unfortunately, he chose to ride on a donkey. And when he was making the choice of what family was going to come from, he took sides with a carpenter's family in a lowly city called Bethlehem. He was born and decided to reside in a more lowly city. It's like, he, he, instead of being born in Lagos or Abuja or Portacourt, he decided to be born in Obomosho. I'm not saying we are not important. But instead of living in Obomosho, he decided to go and live in Igbo. That's what Nazareth was. It was a nearby town, but based on ranking, based on ranking, it was lowly. It was lowly. So that when Philip was trying to communicate his perceived nomenclature, naming system for Jesus, he called him Jesus from Nazareth because that's where he was living. Um, Nathaniel needed to remind him that you see, the prophecies did not capture Nazareth. Nazareth is not that important in prophecy. What the prophecy actually said was Bethlehem. So instead of saying, no, the prophecy is Bethlehem in Judea. He said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? That even prophecy does not have anything to say about Nazareth. It's, it's not, it's a, it's a dry land. That was how he chose science. It was that protocol of Jesus that gives you a place in wealth in the kingdom. He went for the worst so that you can have the best. Can I also announce that that exchange is not going to happen. It has happened. So, you now need to apprehend as truth and begin to download the instructions, like I said, and the admonitions that makes your new status in God a reality. If not, if you keep crying to God to say, why am I like this? He will say, I've done what I'm supposed to do. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. If you saw Jesus on the streets of Nazareth, 
there was no halo on his head. There was nothing different about what he was wearing. He was a natural, he looked natural. So that men needed to witness of people like John to say he's not a normal person like us. He's the lamp of God that taketh away the sin of the world because John could recognize him not because he saw a glow on his head but because he was giving a sign. Keep baptizing but the end of your baptismal ministry will come when you see the spirit of God descend in the likeness of a dove and remains upon him. It means there were many people that the spirit of God descended on. But there was, there was no landing, there was no sitting, no throne to rule from. So he landed and he moved. But on this one he stayed, it meant that he had prepared for that reception. That was how John could recognize him. The Bible says the world could not recognize him. They could not know him. He now came to his own. And the Bible also said that his own received him not. In the context of John's delivery, his own was actually the Jewish nation. In this context of my delivery, his own is that set of people that God has assigned to him. Mm. Remember that from the prophetic labors of David in Psalm chapter 110 verse 3, the Bible referred to the imagined army as thy people. Are you with me? Thy people. It means that there is an allocation to the Christ in John chapter 17 verse um, 2. John 17 2. Let me have it. I want to show you this allocation thing. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So he has an allocation. They are not yet saved, but they have been allocated salvation. So the Bible says he came to his own. It means he approached unto those who have been numbered in him, but the Bible says his own received him not. The response from the world was the same response from his own. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Keep verse 12 up because that's where I want to labor around. Receiving the presence of the Christ. Verse 12, verse 10 to 12 gives us a picture of the divine attempt to occasion the reception of the Christ. It was that God designed an approach and you will see that approach in a more organic expression from Titus chapter 2 verse 11. The Bible says the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. But you see that grace does not self-install. A man must carry out um, an activity that opens his heart. So the Bible says as many as received him. He gave them power to become. He did not give them power to receive him. Are you with me? So. He came as a marketer. And said Emmanuel. This Emmanuel's research was made. In a. a it's a senior research. Let me not show them. Anyway. They don't use to collect this research in the Bible. Oh. So this wristwatch is a it's a Rolex wristwatch. Oh, when I grow up, I'll be like you. I'll be wearing Rolex too. It's a Rolex wristwatch. I know you didn't steal it. You bought it. Or you were given. You were given. Emmanuel received, you know, when, when I saw him playing and I saw the shine, 
his hand looked more beautiful because of this research but a person could have offered you and you could have said no your hand will still be beautiful but the extra adornment that the wearing of this wristwatch communicates to you will have been impossible because all that that person did was take you will need to decide if you want it or not everybody Emmanuel is wearing this wristwatch because he rationalized his possibilities what will my hand look like you know there are things people want to give you and you put it in your hand and you say, you find you. And then, you say, I don't want this one. Are there not things like that? And somebody is offering you and sometimes you don't even need to wear it. See, when people come to make hairstyles with you, do you recommend? Most times, you look at the shape of the person's head and say, with this your square head, hmm? Is this kind of hair that can, okay? There's no okay. With this your oval or oblong head, is this kind of hairstyle? Some people will insist that no, this is what I want. You can only advertise, you cannot force them to wear it. And if you insist, the simple thing to do is to close your eyes. Because when you close your eyes from that point, you come into another realm, and that's the realm of imagination. They, you can wear a hair that has not been made on your hair. For example, now, if Pastor Diola, you say um, he should barb this Mohawk thing. You know the Mohawk style? It's, a, it's an ancient Indian style where you just have hair in the center. All that Pastor Diola needs to do to know his possibilities with Mohawk is to close his eyes. You change the hair on your head by closing your eyes. I say, it will look good based on what I'm seeing now. But when you remember that um, that one that on Tuesday you need to carry the microphone, you'll be checking. Uh, Usu come you want to listen to me. Usu come you not tell um, praise. Ah, something has happened to Pastor. <laughs> so because you don't want those feedbacks, you will leave it. He did not empower you to receive him the possession of power was a byproduct of the reception it says a lot because it means that the power that he gave was supposed to perform another function which now validates your reception let's read again but as many as receive him that was a choice they made and like i've said in this house as a believer the last choice you are really supposed to make if you want to live accurately is the choice of Jesus as the Lord of your life. Beyond that point, you are designed to live by a will. The way the kingdom functions in its organic mode is that it flashes you with options so that it looks as if you are still open to a choice. But like your master, you will now choose the path of wisdom to say it's not what I want what do you want and then when he communicates what he wants you begin to live by what he wants are you with me good so because you chose to take sides with god you received him when you received the present the person of the christ what you received was the presence of the christ where do you stay on that g if i come into your room what you received was a person but what you came into is the experience of my presence by the mercy of god there are realities that are attached to me just like there are realities that are person specific to you also even physically so that if i if i spread my body somehow your room becomes implicated not consciously just because i came so that if somebody says this is the reverend come here you say yes there are things that i may leave around maybe you look at where you are charging the phone my phone is a regular phone anyway and you say okay oh this phone it looks like reverend's phone he says it's his phone he's here or we come into your compound and you see my car part my car is a regular car so you say this car looks like reverend's car he says the one 
it was a man that came but the things that attached to his existence also became present because he came i'm saying that if you receive him there's a way to validate your reception is that his presence administers an empowerment and what that empowerment does is that it's an it it occasions the becoming it changes your identity you received him as one of the sons of men when you receive him he administers the power that makes you one of the sons of god are you with me so moving from sons of men to sons of god what name can we call that process huh? if you started your life as this, a son of man now you have become the son of god what is what can we call that process we want to give that power a name so that you know what kind of power it's the word conversion conversion so what he gives you immediately you receive him is the power for conversion is that power for conversion that begins to release government inside you so that the things that you used to do that are contrary to his will will become subjects of conviction and by the supply of grace you'll be able to walk away from them and your identity now as a son of god becomes further established in the last few weeks i've had too many questions from people online trying to say how does change happen in the believer and i have continued to insist that you see the the administration of change is a is this is it has been gifted a partnership in god do you want what you need to do is receive him if you receive him what happens on the other side is not your business it does not empower you to receive him it is at the mercy of your choice but if you receive him i've shared the story that when we're young and if my siblings are hearing it means this maybe this is one of the first times i watched the movie we're still living in our old house before we moved to our own house and i watched the movie it was a short movie so we used to have this enclosure where we had cutlasses well if we fetch water too because when daddy when we moved our house was a missionary house the water was not running the house we had to fetch water for a, from a well. That's how we lived. Our house was actually a mud house when we moved to our current location before Jesus helped us. It was just cemented. So cracks were a normal thing. You, something can be creaking inside the wall. It was normal. That's where we lived for almost nine years. Almost nine years. If I don't serve Jesus, the way my father served Jesus will stand against me. If I choose comfort instead of sacrifice, his life will convict me. That's why I'm careful. So, I remember we had this cable that we ran to give us light in that enclosure because there's normally, there was no light. There. So as I was doing my sword fight, I picked one of the cutlasses and phew, phew, phew. And I felt, where should this thing land? And I allowed it land on the cable because there was no power supply. Somebody must have been monitoring me who wanted to quench my life because immediately my, my sword went through the cable. The guy pressed the switch. And I went, and I dropped it. If you saw me after that event, I was gentle. Since then, I've had holy fear for electricity. <laughs> Somebody will now come and say, how did you start respecting electricity? <laughs> I didn't learn it in school. I didn't learn it in school. You see, interactions, there's a programming that has been locked into interactions with electricity and that programming ensures that anybody who interacts with electricity like the kind of interaction that I had we respect it <laughs> it's simple I know you don't know what hot water what hot water does to people that program is inside of hot water is inside of hot iron
is inside wrong relationship. That if you if you if your heart is broken once, you learn wisdom. Some people don't learn it too, but that's in normal programming. So you want to see, okay, if you meet with the wrong person, how does heartbreak happen? No. It was not designed to be known in a class. It was designed to be known in an experience. That's the same way that change happens. We come into mental knowledge because the experience works. The reason why it was designed to be known like that is that the program of change is not in you. It's in the Holy Ghost. But there is a protocol of initiation like a switch if we put off this switch now this light will go off those who studied that greek may not know why it went off is that this switch was just designed to complete a circuitry once you press it there's still light and there's still you no know, there's still what do you call them now the current still flows through the cable but because the circuit cannot be completed there will be no light in the same way your call is to receive him. And the first thing he does is that he releases the power for conversion. So if you claim that you have received him, you must already by now be on a journey of conversion. That if we checked two years ago and we came back to check now, there should be something different about your life and there should be a progressive difference in your life. That's how it works. Let me try and, for time's sake, peep into my notes to ensure that there's nothing he wants me to emphasize. Good. So I have in my notes that the reception of the Christ, which is something that every one of us did in the day you called him Lord, the living reality of your the acknowledgement your your acknowledgement of his lordship is that you received him are you with me when adam said to eve it's an ancient protocol bone of my bone flesh of my flesh eve walked away from god and started following adam that was his reception protocol acknowledgement so when you said i accept you today as my lord and savior what happened to you was that he came in acknowledgement is a gate opener in the spirit he came in and when he came in he began to administer this power so that the presence of the christ was not designed as an end it was a means to an end and its temporary end is the delivery of the power for conversion now beyond this first reception which i believe every one of us have received somebody may be asking since i have received him why am i not changed it is because last week i explained to you that the christ just like god is designed to existentially function along two lines when it comes to his presence he can function or express as the omni omnipresent right the omnipresent god which is the omnipresent christ or function as the manifest god or the manifest christ so christ is also a the presence of the christ is also a portion the reality of omnipresence or manifest presence when it comes in like this the design is that once this power is released conversion begins but it can settle in a life for 10 years and that person will remain the same because what exposes you to change is that your first reception must give back to other receptions let me show you a verse of scripture Revelation 3.20 Revelation 3.20 was Jesus' um, instruction to the church of the Laodiceans. What did he say? He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
He's there already. So if we say, Inside me, Yahweh is inside me. Oh. Can we sing that song? Yeah. Inside me, Yahweh is inside me. Ah, what's happening? Okay, okay, okay. There's one note that is off. Um, okay, okay. When you received him at first, you can sing this song. But the only thing you may have to show for Yahweh being inside you may be the song. Just like people who sing. I have the way. Let's sing, let's sing that one too. I have the way. Sing. The Spirit of God. Yes. a believer one who by believing and by confession has opened the gate in their hearts to give admittance to the life of God which is proof that not the God kind of life it's not a derivative it's the life of God what Jesus said was to give eternal life not to give a kind of are you with me uh, so, so uh, because sometimes if the signs of God the tokens of the life of God are not seen a man can find a comfort zone that what I received is a derivative oh Johnny oh Johnny uh, so uh, you know if, if you are acting drama and they say that you will do voiceover for dog hmm? and you do bo 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 they can permit it but this thing i did no dog sounds like that but at least they will admit it in the drama where uh, it's still dog the reason why they will admit it is it's not dog life that i'm using to do this thing are you with me uh, it's, it, this one is not even a derivative i'm just mimicking it the average believer is trying to mimic the life of god god used to tell the truth let me to be trying to tell truth God used to, God is pure. Let me to be trying to be pure. I, I know my teachings in this season are foundational. But you see, we want to fly. Foundation, the, 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 the mystery of, um, of transformation is locked in foundational teachings. Are you with me? So, uh, you are trying because you think what you have is a kind of, a derivative of what jesus gave is the life of god that's how he lived in the earth it was the life of god the software of god is what jesus used to live that's the likeness of god the only thing that was altered for the purpose of salvation was the image are you with me it was the image of sinful man that he ran with but it was the original life that was inside him that's what entered you when you sing your halves away we cannot argue with you but it's there's a problem there's a problem 
when you now go to have rains away and we now require power and you are telling us stories that you know I've not prayed for two years so when I pray for two years I'll be able to do this thing. if you stab a dog it will back the back may not be strong it may do back, 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 but it will back are you with me the thing is because backing is one with the dog am I saying that prayer does not administer it but I'm saying that at least there will be a sign that you have power are you with me what else is inside the way healing I know that in your own life you have never touched your head to command headache out of it you don't have plans even if you want to approach to pray for you say say I beg you will give us reasons why you think that a spiritual solution should not impact something that is natural that is it's not attack is uh, it's just I just stayed in the sun say it's, this one is Panadol may God help you the reason why you don't see those signs because all these things that were mentioned in that song has been outworkings of the Zohe are the outworkings of a son of God it's, that's, that's what conversion backs certain realities that was the design but that conversion process does not find fulfillment where a man stops with the first reception he will need to knock your door just like he knocked the door of the house he will need to knock the kitchen door and knock the toilet door and sometimes a man is kept away from the fullness of his expression because even though the door was open the doors have not opened so in speaking to a church that began as a representative of the Christ in the city of Laodicea and now have become one with the city Jesus had to say to them I'm writing the reason why I'm writing to you is because I still recognize with you even though you can no longer be identified with me behold I stand at the door and knock it was not a communication to those who were going to be fresh believers so the context was not a call, was not an evangelistic call it was a call to consecration a call after the order of the one that Paul made in and Romans chapter 12 I urge you therefore brethren you are already saved but the fullness of your salvation has not expressed you still look like a non-believer and the reason is that you did not know that after you first off offered yourself you must continue to offer yourself you are actually a living sacrifice it means any day you don't come to the altars and offering your life will be a theater of wickedness somebody is asking why does our life go up today and come down the days your life came down were the days you didn't come to the altar you escaped you escaped you decided to live in the consciousness of yesterday's sacrifice must god receive it every day there are songs that we sing that 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 teach us that we must come every day i remember when i was doing my jam lesson in Ephraim, 2001 it was the first time i heard the song read on me Stay on your king. Read on me. Holy Ghost fire. Read on me. Yesterday is gone. Yesterday is gone. Today I'm in me. Holy Ghost power. suggested that the one who received or composed that song lives or lived his life with a consciousness that yesterday was not designed to be sufficient for today so the bible says that sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof to manage the evil that is captured in every day the bible says blessed be god who daily loaded us with benefits so that against what the enemy resurrects today to attack you he gives you something 
that gives you an advantage for today even in the lost prayer jesus instructed that we're designed to be daily nourished he said give us this day our daily bread i need you more more than yesterday i need you more more than words can say i need you more yesterday more than yesterday I need you more more than words can say Every year, every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. The man who received that song understood that a 24, a once in 24 hours reception will not solve my problem. I need you 24 times every day. That's the way I sing that song. I sing, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. And even now, I need thee. I want him to be present now. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I to thee. Oh Jesus. Can we lift up our cry into a cry in two minutes? We want to place a demand on the one who is the ever present help. <laughs> hey. Bono katomi barano kastato bedano mi katabo.
in Jesus name we have prayed you may please be seated the one who has received him must continue to receive him must continue to receive him so he came to the Laodicean church and said behold I stand at the door not the door of salvation it could be a door of intensified consecration a door of greater devotion a door of further separation there are many doors that exist after the main door so that the one who walks into your house walks into a sitting room but there is a door towards your kitchen and the, there is a reality in the kitchen that will not be exposed to the man in the sitting room there is a there, there are things to do in a toilet that until the gates of the toilet are open that man will be in the sitting room is in your house but he's pressed there's also the door of a bedroom there's also the door of a bathroom so you might need to ask could it be that it was only the first door I opened Jesus said to them behold I stand at the door and knock it is the opening of this door that occasions the reality of the manifest of the manifest presence of the Christ when he comes to knock again if a man gives him admittance it is from here that change begins to take place in your life are you getting my point so we need to ask have you heard this cry because the bible says behold i stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice it means there is the possibility of the knock and then the man is not here the man may become so raptured in the opening of the first door that he feels that um, no other door the man may also be depressed because he's wondering why since the last door opened change has not attended to his life and after years of depression he may have subscribed to his own works trying to get it done that he's too busy to hear a knock are you with me if any man hear my voice and open the door i will come in to him somebody is saying was he not there before what that would line means is that i will step in further into him my reception my presence will, will experience greater penetration into him and will sup with him and he with me I did some writings as I was traveling this morning because I didn't plan this one too. This was between a bado and oil. What door, as I wrote here, it was is the door of, of the manifest into the manifest presence, the door of divine expression or divine activity. If this door is open, the observatory presence of God becomes an active presence it begins to collide with you what gives us the privilege to open the door is that you hear the voice I have a line for opening doors I said some people come around you don't open a door because you heard a knock am I right you should ask who are you or who is there sorry um, who is there you can put sorry so that if your who is there sounds very strong they know you have said sorry or please who is there if you are more too you say can you kindly introduce yourself we used to have one uncle in our area when we first moved in 91 uncle tile when you knock their house door and he says who is there and in your you say mini he said no that's god that's bearing that name <laughs> He, he introduce yourself introduce, you don't have name what was it what's the meaning of a meaning it's God's name it's not your name mention your name and if you not can say you're Emmanuel 
we need to ask Emmanuel what? Especially if your voice does not strike a unique chord in your heart. Are you with me? The reason why if any man hear my voice is important. And that's what the Lord is saying to me now. He said after that first time, one of the reasons why some believers sustain depravity is that there are contrary voices that come to knock. So you are not supposed to open the door to the one who suggests governance over your life. There is a knowing of the voice of your master that is supposed to occasion that open. And if that knowing is not there, that's the ability to know that this is Jesus speaking to me. You will need to ask him this night that he installs that extra software. You know there are softwares that have um, like um, extensions. So you will need to tell him, Lord, I can hear a knock, but I want to know your voice amongst many voices. I've had many people tell me, how do you know the voice of God differently? You see, if I need Belumi to do something for me, I must understand from basic principles that it is more beneficial to me who is giving the instruction to introduce myself to a point that you can recognize me. It is God's job to, in, to, to, to make unique his speakings to you. And one of the cheap ways he has ensured that is in your exposure to the word of God. The word of God doesn't just communicate lines. It communicates a texture. A texture. A texture. My dad called me this morning and he said, number I didn't have on my phone. So, when, the, when I picked the call, he didn't say anything, so I said, please, who is on the line? I made I heard his voice. Ah, daddy, because he has spoken to me too many times and his voice has rested. So, there is a responsibility on the part of the one who wants to master the voice of God to position themselves for hearing. And the cheapest way to hear God is in his word. Because he will not speak contrary. Don't, don't listen to those people who say that God has other ideas that are not captured in his word. No. He will not speak against his word. The Bible says that above all of his name, he has exalted his word. So there is no introduction that you can give to God that will make him skip, speak contrary to his word. Our God is a consistent God. So he uses his word. There's a, there's a device in physics that is called a tuning fork. The tuning fork it was, was the tool that was used to tune those ancient pianos that have, um, that have strings. So what they do is they, they strike the tuning fork on a hard surface. It makes a sound, but because of its vibrations, it sets the other string vibrating at its frequency. And once a frequency is attained, they, with a spanner, lock it so that if you strike the key, that's the sound you'll be hearing. The word of God is the tuning fork. It's designed to, to draw your heart along the lines of the divine frequency. That when you hear a knock and you want to give it attention, when you find out that the voice texture is different, these things I'm trying to explain were not designed to be explained like this. They are organic things. Lord, help me hear you. We solve this problem. Ye, ye have not. Because he asked not. Lord, help me master your voice. There is a special, specific training that will make you know the voice of God. It's easier than we are running it. It's easier. It's easier. If you hear his voice, And hearing his voice is that you have come into acknowledgement by obedience. You have signed up to comply with the knock. He said he will come in. And when he comes in, he will first eat with you. The God that he is, if you watch normal movies, when a God approaches, what do they do to the God? You, you come with them, um, you, you, 
from the outflows of your hospitality you offer the God a sacrifice you see true worship does not happen until these doors have been opened because true worship is, 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 is intimacy and it doesn't happen in the public are you with me so there are sacrifices that the one who has given him access we offer him it could be a sacrifice in prayer it could be a, a, a communication that says, Lord, ah, if you have come this far, I'll live for you. A sacrifice in dedication. A sacrifice in devotion. A sacrifice in literal praise. Those are the things that God feeds on when he comes in. He also feeds on the, the things that are not accurate about you. He engulfs them. He takes them out. But it doesn't end, this entrance doesn't end with God feeding on the things that a man can offer. When he has finished feeding on the things that you can offer, he will now make you come to feed on the, his own things. That's where the beauties begin to find expression. Let me show you two verses of scripture. We'll do a song, it's a common song, and I'll go to the third part. John chapter 14 verse 23, Jesus explained this protocol of hearing his voice and acknowledging by obedient compliance so that he can come in. Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, what will he do? He will keep my words, obey my commands, and my father will love him, and we will come unto that man. And beyond coming unto him, we will do what? We will make our board with him. So there is an approach and there is a dwelling. Leave the rain, leave the rain. We still have time, so relax. If your cloth is outside, you dry tomorrow. Stay here. We will come unto him and make our board with that man. If he stays, because your path is like the path of the just, it means the quality of the outworkings of his of his taking his abode in you is supposed to be ever increasing. The things you do with the presence, the things that the presence of God gives back to, is supposed to be increasing. So, for example, maybe you are a, a singer. That's how you started. There are supposed to be more realities that will attach themselves to your sound. Not because you are trying to bring in more things, but because the presence is getting deeper. And like a movement I used to, you know, used to define this thing. When in old times, you put a video cassette player, uh, a video cassette, um, a video cassette in a video cassette player, once you push it in, it stays and then it starts playing. That's When you are done with episode, whatever you are watching, there is a knob and what is written on that knob is eject. But even though the attempt is to eject, what you do is that you depress. Are you with me? When you press that knob, there is a spring construction that goes to the back of your video cassette the first thing it does is that it lifts the video cassette because when you press it it goes straight it now goes down it lifts it you are not participating the only thing you press is eject and then you stay it lifts it up and then it brings it out i am saying that the stronger the press of the presence of the christ into you the greater the capacity to lift his things and make them expressible to the world so the presence of the Christ was not supposed to be admitted only on the day that you got saved if you if he knocks again and you open the door he will sup with you he will deal with the things in your life that was what happened in John chapter 4 as that woman began to give him more access to her life he began to deal with more things until what she was designed to do began to manifest so salvation sets you know sets up the program for glorification for those that he has called he has 
sanctified and you don't know what needs to be cleansed until he enters you know you can all set up your room and one of your friends comes and says ah ah is this not the pot that you know some people use, spot used to do night vigil I mean in the morning the pot will still be there with being spot with water and it can even go many days that the pot will now start emitting foam may God help us it's not only brothers houses so there are sisters houses like that but they are preparing to get married but they, are, they have culture solutions in their house you know what a culture solution is they are rare, consciously rearing bacteria in their house because they have three or four days ago pot that is still lying there if I now tell you I'm coming to see you what will you likely do that's why some people don't quickly open the door it's not that they are naked it's that certain things have to relocate things that were not necessary to relocate because you didn't have a visitor so that maybe Israel now when it comes to night this is how he removes his shoe so one shoe can hang on the cupboard the other one can be beside the stove and then when we say we are doing sisters visitation to your house and three or four sisters are coming Israel says where are you now you think he's trying to <laughs> that question is to help him know how many minutes he has to be able to reorganize he can say ah, don't climb by here to wait 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 so that he can reorganize because he knows their presence will bring conviction that ah, is you are together you are together but you are scattered that's what his extra entry does he attacks the things that you have built and called normal and then when he has finished laboring in on every new layer of conviction he gives you his own things that's why we say that whatever dies successfully receives a gift of his life so i will come into him i will sup with him and then he with me that's the protocol of the reception of the christ foundational reception and then lifelong reception and that is the mystery that god has allocated to us to but change amen receiving the presence of the christ finally when is when he begins to introduce a man to his things the man enters into the shape of the psalmist in psalm chapter 24 verse from verse 6 the psalmist gives us a picture of his feedback with the lord he starts by saying this is the generation of them that seek thee that seek thy face O Jacob and then he pauses to think and goes to verse 7 what did he say uh, am I wrong sorry let me why am I wrong don't think I should be uh, no I don't okay good um, did I rearrange them Because that first verse to look strange. 27. Give me from 3. 27, 3. 27, 3. He says, Do a camp, do a an host shall encamp around me. My heart shall not fear. He's a man who has found an atmosphere within an atmosphere. No war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. Next verse. One thing have I desired of the Lord. When the Lord begins to expose a man to his things, the first thing that happens to you is that your anxiety is quenched. And then you find out that you begin to desire him. Are you in a relationship? I see. Don't shake your head too hard. It's not wrong. 
you think that you like everybody now and that you can spend your time with everybody you will find out that when a damsel rests in your heart and I pray that it will be by the Holy Ghost say amen very well when that damsel rests in your heart your interactions as you give her more admittance into your heart she will become your only desire you can pass beside sister purity are you in a relationship because uh, maybe i don't think it's sister purity that's why i'm using that example or are you thinking you don't know yet you are not sure mm. just just don't don't be sure wait on god when the time comes you'll be sure so you can pass beside sister purity and maybe tonight the last thing you are planning to say is your hair is fine because your hair is fine you will not say it it's because one has stolen your heart that's one of the feedbacks when his presence becomes overwhelming you are willing to hurt anybody just to keep him there this loose living dies because in loose living we don't we don't we don't let me use street language the reason why christians live loose as they don't send the lord they don't send him if i hurt you I'll say sorry that's the end but when he comes in he feasts on your things and he begins to expose you to his things you will find out that it will become your one desire so the psalmist arrived at that point there was a, an absence of fear because the presence had become so overwhelming and his testimony was one thing have I desired of you and that will I seek it is that I may dwell in your house that your presence will be my only experience all the days of my life he understood what happens to a man who has gained entrance into the blessed into the presence because hmm, Jesus as I spoke last week administered to us the concept of coin hearing as I am in the father somebody say as I I'm in the father and the father is in me one of the things he means is that the father enters into you or you enter into the father let me put it that way to the degree that the father has entered into you if you live in a six bedroom duplex and you give God access to one room it is that same distance that he has covered in you draw nigh unto me and i will draw nigh unto you it means i will only go as far as you have gone the psalmist understood that if the presence becomes so overwhelming here if it has gained penetration i have gained penetration and when I come into you, oh God, just like you can see intricately into me, there are sites that validate my further entrance. He says that I may dwell in your house all the days of my life and what I will be doing is that when a man comes deep into your house, he doesn't have time for frivolities. Your house is supposed to enrapture a man. All I will be doing is to behold your beauty. Have you entered the house before that? Your host start to tap you. Ah, it's me that you came to see now. Because as you journey deeper, it happens in movies. One brother, one friend is just walking on the road. It happens in Igbo films. And then he meets his friend who maybe has done ritual money. Because it's ritual money, they always advertise. They don't advertise hard work. And then says, Ah, Obi, 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 my friend. Say, what are you doing here? See the way you are. Say, let me take you home. And then when he enters, what do you see the friend doing? <sighs> say, my friend, ah, you have gone home. He's raptured in the beauty. When the presence of God finds penetration inside you because you allowed it, when God opens himself to you, you become an explorer. You become an explorer. You don't have time. There's a way you voraciously feed on the word. Because you know there's more. There's more. 
they call you to eat you confess like the psalmist that i esteem your words more than my necessary food i know you are trying to achieve bible study by 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 will it was not designed to be like that spiritual things are supposed to be loved because of value are you with me people stay long in prayer because prayer started as 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 began to um, to communicate a feedback system if you go to a friend's house except if your mouth runs the area you can't stay there speaking for five hours but when you say one thing and you're about to you know those friends that they don't talk much but as about to round up one thing you just say ah the things that are even going on in Nigeria and then it's like it's, it's one line unlocks another two hours say I'm going home say, ah. say if somebody even reaches the house now, who is even there there's even no wife and then the wife matter comes up again there, there are people like that so if somebody tells who are you saying for six hours you can't really put them in topical version every statement that your friend said was the unlocking of it all there are things to see there are things to know there are things that were not designed to be taught and should not be taught there are things for those who go far for scripture says it is they who do business in the open seas that see the wonders of God in the deep if you stay at the banks God will come to the banks and the appearances around the sea when you come to the banks are these fishes that are fingerlings because they don't need depths to survive if you want to know what an octopus looks like or what a starfish looks like or what a shark or a whale looks like you won't come to the shore you will need to row your boat gently down the stream Abby when you get far into the stream you will and you get into the depths the creatures that are in the depths will begin to speak to you so scripture says deep call it unto the deep at the noise of thy water sprouts all your waves have come upon me if you want the depth of God you will need to give him access into you for it is the depth of depression that also communicates the depth of exit one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after it shows that that key is bad that's why I'm singing like this play 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 It's still not good. To behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in the temple, the temple. I There's so much to see. I inquire in the step of the I
God is offering to us tonight is a fellowship of his things. To the degree that we allow him to come in and be present in us. It is to that same degree that he will allow us to be present in him. The concept of divine presence is supposed to follow that protocol of coin hearing. That God is in me and I am in God. I am in God's presence and God is also present inside me. Is there someone in the building tonight who truly wants to begin to behold the things of God? Can you allow him to come further into you? In two minutes, maybe there is a noticed area of your life, one in which you have been hearing the knockings of God. He's been saying, admit me. Can you use these two minutes to say, Lord, tonight I hold back no longer. It's not a prayer for everyone. It's for those who understand that there is, there are still places in God to come into. But you will be denied access if he cannot come further into you. then we'll close the gates of this series you may be seated we expect that people will go back and listen to these messages I know you understood to a degree but your heart is designed to receive in more cells in more cells so you must uh, when you when you when you pound the arm you don't rush eat it it's more cell by more cell. sometimes you need to you need to function in coming into spiritual understanding like a ruminant animal. That you grab all that you can grab and then when you have come into a region of peace, you sit down and engage the process of regurgitation. It means you keep what you have digested in the ante parts of your stomach and then you bring it back. Now you now masticate it properly and then you now allow it to go far. That's the way it is. Okay, so let me close. Let me do my closing word on this thing. Hosting the presence of God. I know it's a subject we'll still do in the coming year. But let me just give us enough for this season. 
The first time we pictured the hosting of the presence of God in the earth, it was within the context of a particular geographical location referred to as Eden. Eden. It is therefore wisdom that in trying to gain mastery of the dynamics of hosting the presence of God, we must all get back to Eden. In Eden will be gifted wisdom. Wisdom along the lines of what God wants, what is God's taste, and what pleasures God. When man fell, there was a template that became lost. And in that day, man became an inventor. So that he believes that the hosting protocols, when God is the visitor that wants to come, are relative. Um, the choir people understand this. If you want to sing a song that um, will give God a vehicle of transport, there are many spiritual things that you will do, but there are also many physical things that you will do. It might be impossible except we converge, bring our ideas together, then remove a few things to arrive at a manual. That if you want to pleasure God through songs, first pray for two hours. I'm just saying, you, pray for two hours. Make sure that you don't do anything naturally musical. I'm not saying that's the protocol. You don't do anything naturally musical. You utilize the, the channel of prayer to journey into the deep seas. Or the channel of meditation and then you don't run a list of songs that are on your mind you wait until there is a meeting in that meeting the Holy Spirit will administer to your heart what he wants you to sing and then you begin to sing that song well I learned that watching my two brothers to fill Sunday and his main keyboardist my brother Collins that when we go for meetings, even though they have a long list of songs and the worshippers in the congregation are waiting to, to say, I know that you can't say it, even though they don't want to die. Even though they, they, they just come to church, they don't really belong to Jesus. We know that people are willing to say, oh, say it and do your worst. That's the next thing they want to sing, but he waits. And then the keyboard does not even produce a sound so that his movement is not manipulated. Are you with him? He begins to speak to his Lord. He brings a burden in English and then the burden begins to welcome the utilization of these new tongues and then begins to go, begins to go. After a while, he gets into a plane where the purpose of this ascent is known. That the body of God is consecration. I know people think that if we come to worship God, we are just supposed to sing, oh glory, and go away. You see, the true worship of God is actually the acknowledgement of the shape of God that has appeared. So if God comes as a sanctifier, you need to worship him along that line. And as you worship him, the reality of the one that you have seen begins to manifest. God begins to wash people. Are you with me? So, they glide. And he finds out that, ah, God is saying, my people come in. Come close to me. So he knows that they, a cry for intimacy is the essence. And then he signals the keyboardist. And he begins to play. He just begins to play. The prayer continues until the fellowship of the prayer and the, and the sound now bats one of those songs. It can be a totally new song. It can be an old song. And in that song, because it is a song of the spirit. A song of the spirit. The word of is ek. It means a song that came out of the spirit. Are you with me? 
now becomes a vehicle that carries you into the place where you meet the face of God that is interacting with you. Now, that's my observation. I've seen it happen many times. And that's why those meetings become electrified. Maybe if Theo shows us mercy and he comes, eh, I will tell him, you need to teach how you travel. He will oblige. Because I've told him too many times, he needs to teach people the things that he has found in God. Don't just sing to their hearing. The average person who sings your song is not in the spiritual location where those songs mean anything. He's singing your song like he sings Buga. To him, it's just a song. He doesn't have the commitment, so he defeats the purpose. Because some who sing those songs and snap themselves inside the song, they call Emmanuel the worshiper. Inside the worship, you can handle a phone and snap yourself. Say, a tear in me. You know, he's crying. You can still see himself. You must say that when a man is crying, he still sees. Abi? So, we can say, okay, these protocols, but I'm saying that even though we can begin to suggest the things to do, there was a protocol, there was a manual for worship that was delivered to Adam. And until we go back to Eden, that's where the manual was curated. The manual was, when we say manuals are lost, like the manual for, for accurate service, all of those manuals were in Eden. It was Adam that was evicted. It was not the manuals that were thrown away. So when the axe head, when the, when, the, when the sons of the prophet approached unto him and said, this place is too straight for us. Give us room to go and, you know, cut wood and enlarge the place of our dwelling. But go with us. He followed them. And I don't know what Elisha was doing. Maybe he was far into his own visions. And then they came to him and said, at last, the axe head is falling and he was borrowed. What did he say to them? It's, it's a principle in scriptures. He said, show me where it fell. So he took a stick, threw it in, and against physics, the axe had floated. When Martha rushed to Jesus and said, if you had come, my brother would have lived. What did Jesus say? Show me where you laid him. It means we must journey back to the place where he died. Somebody is saying, sir, help me. I get those messages too. I get them now every day. I am prayerless. What we should ask is, where did prayer die? Show us the altar. It may be the altar of immorality. It may be the altar of the pursuit of strength of the things of the world. If we help you pray and you are still pursuing that thing, you will still be prayerless. Take us to where it died. Where the prayer died. All oh, this thing that killed it. When we get to that point, you will know how it died. And you will know how to ensure that this new one does not die. If you are carrying candle and you, be, and you go out to play in the rain, you now come back and say, the light of my candle has died. Light the candle again. Help my candle. Does that person need help? The question should be, how did the fire go out? So I played in the rain. See, water and fire are no friends. If you want your candle to be lit, so some of us in this building and online who are going through a spiritual desert, what we need to ask is, how did you arrive in this desert? In case you don't know, that should be the subject of your prayers. Lord, how did I become distant from your word? What else is taking my time? Don't rush into solutions. So you have a life long in prayers. But you don't want to be living around these circles. Your path was up, 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 perfect day. Not up and down spiritual life. Like you are drawing, uh, they call them sinusoidal um, waves. He has a trough. And while, while you are enjoying the trough, you have a bounce. And you say, hey, man of God. And tomorrow, you are, you are a boy of Satan. So I want to go back to it. It was the first place that the... That the the presence of God was hosted. And we don't know how long. Like, I don't think there's any, I don't know. Maybe there are Bible commentaries that tell us how long 
that Adam stayed. I'll check this right. How long Adam stayed there? But there was a is a sustained um, place of meeting or time of meeting because God will come. It was not one visit. He was coming at the cool of the day. It means the the, the ambience, the environment of that garden was convenient for the comings of God. We need to check, is there something that Adam put in place that we need to put in place so that if God grants me the weight of his presence, which is fragile, I will not be walked out of it. Because the story of Adam makes us know that God walks men out of his presence by himself. So let's look at it and then we go to pray. Now, when I began to look at Eden, I found out that Eden as a geographical location. Um, the Bible didn't tell us how Eden itself came to be, if you check. We just know that there was a general creation. There was a separation of the waters and the land. But Eden itself was not planted. Are you with me? So, what I wrote in my notes was that the first thing was that Eden appeared. Man was not designed to be busy or busied with the appearance of Eden because you were not designed to build another Eden. Amen. However, in Genesis chapter 2 and from verse 8 where we start our reading, we are educated along the lines of the shape of Eden. So let's go. The Bible says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. So if you walked, just follow me gradually. If you walked into Eden and you came with a compass and you found the true north, you will find towards that north, west, south, east. That's, am I right? Not, this is west. It's not west, south, east. So the east is the right, is to the right of the north, right? Yes, so this is north. And that's, that's my, where my nature brothers are. So is it on the right? Good. So the east is to the right of the north. It means once you find the true north, towards the right is where you find the east. So the Bible said that the Lord God, that's the pre incarnate expression of the Christ. What he did was that he planted a garden eastward in Eden. If you want, you can call it in the east of Eden. And there he put the man that he had formed. You'll find out that the only thing you can derive from this verse as regards the shape of Eden is that on the eastern side in Eden, there was a garden. And that garden was planted by the Lord. Just stay with me. I want to be very, very petty. That garden was planted by the Lord and the Lord put a man in the garden. Awesome. Next verse. And out of the ground, now speaking of the garden, made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. So the growth of the trees in the garden were not by the command in Genesis chapter 1. Are you with me? The Lord God actually made them grow. Good. That is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Verse 10. And a river went out of Eden. So we're back into the dynamics of Eden. And these things will help you in knowing how to curate the presence of God. So, let's assume that Eden is this whole building. So we don't know how the building came to be. But let's say that this is the east of Eden because, uh, let's say this is the east of Eden. At least, based on this building, this is the most hallowed area. Am I right? If you want to chew, you want to eat bread, you shouldn't come here. We are not saying there's an idol here, but uh, this place is hallowed. 
in the orthodox church they will have put a barricade around here am i right so let's say this is eden this is the garden that he planted and this boy is the man that he put inside the garden the bible says that a river went out of eden so we need to find the direction of the flow of that river the bible says the river went out of eden and from to water the garden so how did the river flow from eden to the garden so that if you walked into eden you'll find out that eden is green are you with me the trees are growing well but what makes it grow is not with what makes it fresh is not within it keep that lesson in your heart eden was not designed to to pioneer a source of sustenance it was supposed to be i mean the garden it was supposed to be supplied from the rest of eden that river watered the garden and from thence it means when the water finished its expression in the garden the river it didn't stop in the garden it now flowed out of eden and but the bible says from thence that means after the garden had been watered the river parted and became into four heads so there is a supply that eden receives so that eden can also be sorry what am i saying eden there is a supply that the the garden of eden received the first assignment of the supply is to ensure that eden is watered it is kept fresh but that's a, that's not the only assignment of the water eden is not supposed to distribute like it received a distribution the garden of eden was the place where the presence of god was first pioneered because within the whole of eden man was only an allocated expression within the garden so the garden gives us a picture of what the presence of God is. That when God finishes creating his presence, so you are not a presence creator, when he finishes creating his presence, he leaves himself in an environment. What he does is that he takes a man and brings a man into that environment and he ensures that the sustenance of that environment is not given to the man in the environment. The assignment of the man is to keep and to guard because there will be other contrary expressions that want to express within the presence of God. There are contaminants that want to come in. Your assignment is to sustain the consecration of a presence that you inherited. A presence whose freshness you are not designed to maintain. Eden supplies it. But if you maintain that presence the way it was supposed to be then the outside world will also come into the outflows of that presence and it came from one source but it will be a multi-distributor are you with me okay you're still not getting what i'm saying i'm saying that um, your life is like the garden in eden when jesus went to the cross he allocated a dwelling place for you in a large space called my father's house and the design for life within that within your your members you want is that the life of god a life that is not generated inside you powers you so it was a river that came from outside the garden that watered the garden but from the garden because of the freshness of the garden the garden was given a capacity to be a multi-supplier if you check those four rivers you'll find out that each of those rivers had a reality that they brought to the outside world in the places that they flowed to they left something there it means the proof that you actually have received from god or that the presence of god is sustained is that you have come under the sustained receptions of god there's something god must be given every day that will make his presence fresh in your life when god stops communicating that supply you will become stale. You will grow dry. 
For they are new every morning. They are new every morning. So great is thy faithfulness. Oh, so great, great is thy faithfulness. Stay with me. So that's what you look like. God is the one who creates his presence. Because foundationally, the presence of God is actually the reality or the experience of a God who is present. So you cannot concoct it. Are you with me? I mean, if, if, if I have, when I, every time I go to the east, I have a, 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 what do you call these guys who make perfumes? What do they call them? You don't know their names. The guys who mix saints together, what do you call them? Sunshine. A what? A saint mixer. I, I need the name. Somebody should help me find it. Lamne, where I look for it. What do you call somebody who mixes saints together? Eh? Con Cheko. Because you will mention your name and son name now. We will now announce it to everybody. You can check. I'm giving you the permission to check. A what? Timmy, you have a name? A, a perfumier. Okay, so a perfumier. So I have this perfumier friend in the north. The guy is a master at mixing scenes. But I found out that for like the last three years, every time I go to minister in one of those cities, he comes with my own bottle. The first time I went, I, yes, I was exposed to a few saints. And then I stayed with one. So he consciously mixes that one. And he now brands it with my picture and gives it to me. So I know at least I'll use that one bottle every year. And when I see him again, he has not failed. Still bring another one. My job is to spray my body and I begin to smell. But I'm but so, so this is where I'm going. So if I spray that scent on my body, I've not heard that combination of saints on any other person. I'm not saying that it's superior, but it was a special mix. So when I come into the room, ah, God will give you money. The one that will keep you in the kingdom. Uh, when, believe me, you get to a point in, in this your earthly sojourn, you will fall in love with a particular saint from a particular perfumer. And then every time you come in, beyond seeing you, somebody will be able to say, Ah, Kalumi Pastor. The reason why that statement was made was that your presence left a residue. Are you with me? So if somebody says we want to create your presence, their labors will be many. They will need to recreate your person because it's your person that left the residue. Are you with me? So I'm trying to take to take um, to take the weight from the shoulders of those who think their job is to create the presence of God. The presence of God is actually the experience of a God that is present. You can't create it. It is his person. If it doesn't come, you can't, you, you can't put it, you can't manipulate it. That one is not given to you. When you have finished all that you want, you know how to do. When you have prepared a good song, where you have instructed everybody that nobody should eat popcorn because a concert is coming. You know, when there are fragments in your voice, nobody should drink hot water. You'll be drinking warm water and then you sprinkle it with um, sunshine. What are those things you put inside water? You put a little bit of lime and, and ginger that to make your voice become moisturized. It's good. And you now say, let's look for songs that extol him. You now, uh, you go, I exalt thee, I exalt thee. And you, you now say, ah, the presence of God is here. Don't make that statement 
until he shows up. Because the things you are, you are doing cannot create his presence. His presence is attached to his person. If he doesn't come, you will not feel him. Before you can make that announcement, God must have signaled you that I came. You know, you know we, don't, we don't wait for the signal. We just think, when we go to church, you say, you know, God is here. And if we say, you're a liar. You say, where, where, where two or three are gathered in my name? You need to count. <laughs> There are many reasons why people gather. See, I've not seen you all week ago. Uh, Wawa Church will block. It's not in his name. The purpose of their coming is to block. Many people come to socialize in church. So you need to be sure that a quorum was formed among those that God marked present. That's why he comes. And because the presence is fragile, he can show up during praise and worship. So that if the worship leader says God is here, it will be true. By the time the sermon is the sermon is starting, he could have gone. <laughs> so the pastor says, "Oh, like the praise and worship team said, God is here." If you have a thermometer, you find out that the tokens of His presence have gone absent. It doesn't take long, because between praise and worship and the pastor, there are many things that can offend that will happen. There's an announcement that God is not involved in that may have been heard. There may be an offering that was that emanated from the soul of the minister that, that was occasioned. Somebody was trying to exaggerate the truth and he entered into the realm of falsehood and he tampered with that presence. God, God just walked outside and went to stay there. But people are still claiming the presence of God is here. That's why we have a lot of actors and we have used fig leaves to, 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 to cover for our nakedness. Because the presence of God was not designed to be in a building where naked people are worshipping. I'm not talking of physical dressing now. There, there is, I, I'm speaking of the manifest presence oh, because I told you God, God moves in a brothel oh. Are you with me? Everybody that was killed in Benue, that was killed in Katsina, God saw every one of them. But he was an observer. That's his only present expression. So, if Pelumi passes, or we hear the saying, somebody said Pelumi was here. Pelumi was here. The only thing that can make us hear, you know, sense that saint, is that somebody walked into your room. You know these people that come that they, they, they are fully dressed to say you are going out. And while you are trying to wear your shoe, it just goes to your table and, and you are the way they spray it sometimes is as though they, they want to bath. You know because they didn't buy it. They are using the one for today and next week. Somebody must steal it. And I found out that you see the holiness of God means that you cannot you cannot pirate his saint. What he leaves in a room when he comes is only him that can leave it in a room. So when we get serious about the presence of God, we will not labor around creating it. We will labor around the things that, that can cut his presence, that can invite him. That's the job of a worshiper. That's and, and it doesn't mean a worshiper in song. Let's look for the things that can invite him. Because God was coming to the garden all the time. It meant that Adam found a technology that kept God visiting. There was something that Adam had that the modern day church has not walked into. That's why God only comes on special services or at best he administers an angel because the house is not too holy enough. I didn't say pure enough. I mean too consecrated enough. What does that mean? It means that the design is not suitable to God. It can accommodate other things. But the chair we gave him is too small for his size. The space we gave him to come in through cannot allow him. So he looks for an entity that is also powerful. That can be accommodated within that space. And he allows that one to come. Next year, we'll teach on holiness. One of our spiritual daughters are much loved. Very much loved. That's me. During the lockdown, invited me to do a teaching. 
on i think it was first um it was was it telegram or whatsapp or, or it was zoom zoom audio the holy god everybody was in their father's houses and i was doing it on my own ironing table that's where i set up the weight of the presence that came for that meeting because i prepared a sermon i found out that some sermons cannot be preached without a dimension of the presence when i began and we be, and i began by introducing what i found in scriptures as his holiness the holiness came and the rest of the sermon was me trying to give expression to what i was experiencing i was a weight even in my room and she told me that a lot of people testified that kai kai and was zoom many years ago i went with daniel daniel was the keyboardist i think Anu was in that meeting too we went to a nearby town and we went for a conference it was a three-day conference they gave me only one one night and when we walked into the one night eh, our brothers were were trying i understand now there was a trial they were doing they were trying to engineer his presence and they were trying to look for songs that sounded um that sounded out of this world sounds and songs that had um that sounded like heaven so when we walked in the current song was hallelujah is a heavenly language you know the song hallelujah hallelujah now where did that song come from I'm not saying it's wrong, but where, where, where did it come from? You don't know. Uh, solution. Because that write up you wrote this afternoon. Ah, see, solution wrote on what was the subject? Yes. How to train a child in modesty. Where did you put it? You have not put it. Where do you want to put it? You just want to keep it. Don't keep it. People need to read it. You have a Facebook page. Put it there. Put it. It's I'm authorizing that you should go. It was it was a masterpiece. So because you passed that test, please help us look for the origin of that song. But that was the song. And then they whipped themselves into a friends. You know, they started clapping. Hallelujah! It's a heavenly language. And after a while, they were all shakes and shivers. And when I came in, maybe many of you don't know this side, this part of Daniel. I believe that Daniel has a thermometer in his spirit. He can sense presence. He looked at me. Say, sir. I said, let's sit down. So we sat down and we babysitted this experience. After a while, they now said, You are the one that's coming up now. You just push this thing. So when I came in and I looked at the leaders, I said, Is God in this meeting? I didn't say God is not here. Be careful to invite me to your meeting. Home. When he sent me, he put a thermometer in my spirit and i am at home with my weaknesses i know i'm not always right but that thermometer has never has really never has never led me wrong sometimes i'm afraid to say what he's saying so i just keep quiet so i say is god in this place they say yes so i now summoned all of the leaders conference oh say the four of you stand there what's the shape of god in this place he is a powerful god what's the shape of god he says a glorious god I can't remember what the other two said. Maybe mighty or healing God. I said, so, you are in one conference. And all of you are convinced that there are different shapes. There was even no confab to, to arrive at a, 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 a unified expression. It means you are in four different spiritual locations interfacing with four different faces of God. Daniel, play your keyboard. I was the first night. So Daniel began to play. I said, don't play a song. Go. Don't play a song. Your hands are anointed. You'll be able to enter heaven's frequency and come with a sound. And he began to play. Well, after a while, the sound became the same sequence. So it was like a rhythm. It was going again and again and again. And then I began to hear faintly, then loudly. It was the same line they were repeating. Holy holy are you lord holy holy are you lord so i began to hum i began to hum and i stopped and i said god is saying that is his holiness 
that came to this meeting. And we began to hum that song. If you stood in that meeting, it's because they held you like this. It took people off and people could not stand. So, when we saw that we had achieved why he sent us, we were going home. People now held my legs. Say, ah, bless me. It was that night that one guy said I should drop something. Drop something, drop something. And I told him that he will suffer to enter something. So, the following morning, the meeting was to start at 7. And the precious one, they are my good friends. They are still my good friends. It was a learning call for them. So, he came to me and said, sir, I said, your meeting starts at 7. This is 8.30. What are you doing here? He said, we well, have told everybody to go home. Ah, you have scattered the conference. He said, yes. That the weight of conviction that came down in that meeting was so much that in their minds now they know that God did not send them. When the holiness of God comes, it becomes a grave thing to use the name of God for what you are doing. You will know that his name is consecrated to his purposes alone. And that is criminal to say God said when he did not say. Or to say God is doing when he's not doing. You will, you will arrive at the entrance point of the Lord's prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's what the inaccurate sound did to a conference. It ended it. The first thing we really need to know about hosting the presence of God is that the, the, the tokens, the signs, the outworkings of his presence are consecrated to God alone. You cannot create it. Adam was not given the assignment to plant the garden. He was brought into it. It is mercy that opens the gate of, that, of the presence of God and ushers men into it. But when you come in, you are given responsibilities. To make sure that nothing tampers with the consecration of that garden. That was Adam's error. And it ended with his eviction. It's the same way you can start a service when you do not know the things that please God. And the things that please God have been built into the system. You were just brought to monitor it. We tamper with it because one we are oblivious to what is there. We tamper with it because we do not understand that mercy does not mean that you are accurate. It just means that um, the, the, the terms that occasion your, your entrance that you could not meet up with have been attained to by another. Are you with me? So it's on the strength of the qualification of another that you have been, admi that you have been admitted. And when you come, you are supposed to live in gratitude and with gravity. It means you live with great fear. Not negative fear, but reverence. You know, when you begin to read your Bible and you suddenly find out that God has descended into your Bible study. I'm going to close now because I won't finish. I'll come back to finish it. I'm beginning to feel a weight. The last time I felt this weight was yesterday night. A pastor came to me who has been trying to see me all this while. Laboring in the Korodu. My host, many of you know him, said, Papa, you need to see this pastor and his wife. I said, Okay, if you want me to see them, I'm going to see them. It's late, but. So I was talking to them and I was asking them, So, how are you laboring here? And then I said, Oh, God bless you, you, you your wife. He said, Sorry, sir, I didn't introduce my wife to you. And because I was tired, I knew if I sat down for long to be speaking to them, um, I'll be there for long. And I have service today. So I was standing talking to them. Immediately I stretched my hand and I said, Ah! Have you done ministry before? She said, No, not serious ministry. Where did you school? She said, For now. It was like a book opened. And I saw written on two different pages the offices that she stood in. That she was standing in one feet, she had one foot in the office of a teacher and the other one in the office of a prophet. Immediately I acknowledged it, a weight of the anointing came and he knocked me to my seat. I had to quickly look for a seat. And I was like, What? What are we looking? You mean that this is what this lady looks like? And she says, She's not done ministry before. I couldn't talk with them again. I just began to pray. I began to pray. 
that young man should take very good care of that woman she must not cry she must not cry she must not cry well the bible says it that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the lord i don't know that woman's name i think she gave me her name maybe a yoruba name but her name is favor that's her name that young man's ministry is blessed to prosper because he didn't marry wrong it's a long time and i'm beginning to feel that same weight because the key the key to hosting the presence of god is that you attend a class of holiness that's that's how we begin i'm going to come back to teach again you attend the class of holiness you understand that what you were called to tend is not something you can create do you know how long it took god to be able to recreate eden in men that's how long it takes because there were certain dynamics around eden that could not be instantaneously recovered for example god came into eden because the image that he came with was already was on demand that he came to meet so the man that wants to play host to the presence of god understands that there is only one covering in the presence of god and it's the covering of god himself are you with me oh, you don't you don't understand what i'm saying ah. let us make man in our image and after our likeness the image of God was, was man's exterior covering. Are you with me? It was the garment that man, what God was, was man's cloth. Are you with me? So the only reason why Adam could meet with God during the cool of the day is that what God was, which had destructive powers, was what Adam wore. Because they had common, they shared common natures. It was easy to interact why was adam afraid he had never seen the judgments of god before are you with me because he was not taught if he had been taught he would not have tampered with god he had never seen the justice system of god that's what i'm saying he was he was he was ignorant of it so why was he afraid he was afraid because he could no longer stand in the presence of god because of a disparity of natures now i'm, I'm i have appeared in something that God is not. It means if I behold him, I'll be destroyed. When we understand holiness, because that all is also within the principle of holiness, that when the presence of God is occasioned, God only wants to see himself. Are you with me? So when a man comes into the presence and does not know how to maintain God in himself, the presence comes into a fragile expression and it fractures. And the man is evicted out of it. That's why to bring us back to Eden, we needed to be covered. That's what Jesus did. And to be found, Paul said, not having a righteousness of my own. It means when, when I showed up, I wasn't clothed in my energy. I was clothed in what Christ has done. And God recognizes that kind of righteousness so he can interface with you. When I come, I will labor a lot. But one assignment. In case you have been experiencing the presence of God, do a study of the holiness of God. Understand that there is only one image that must appear in the presence of God and is the image of God himself. Once man comes in, we will tamper with it. We will lose our hosting rights. If we gain this truth, we will be alive in a few weeks. I mean, church here will be unusual. Church here will be unusual. And that's some place that I'm going to. I want some of us to, I want us to close the year and go back home. And when you sit people down, maybe you are in choir at home. You'll be preparing for what they call that thing they do in December. Caro, caro. Many caro services are people trying to worship a God that they don't know it has become religious that during Christmas was well white and red and some people make a merchandise of, of all of us they do white and red cap they, they, what else do they do some people do mask 
they do beard. You know, adults they, they put beard. It's not for Christmas, so, but he just wants to associate with Christmas. They sew jackets, and we all march to church and sing. Ding dong, merrily on high. And then we go home worshiping a God that we don't know. This time it must be different. Remember that it came as a supply into Eden. When the, if they mistakenly give you a microphone, Emmanuel, to sing, you will become a distributor. What, what has filled you? We filled the church. And then pastor will say, oh boy, where did you go? Let me close. I was a choir boy on campus. Zion Baptist Church with now. Myself, my friend, he's a pastor. I think this present house. Um, what's his name, sir? I've forgotten his first name. But his son's name is Duro Shao. We're together in... Yes, okay. I think they're from here. They're from town here. They're from town here. Buki. 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 Some of you have seen him before. Lamde. You remember? Not too tall. Drives a BMW. Yes. So, uh, that, that's Buki. He plays the keyboard. He doesn't even play too well. But one day, Buki just said, ah, let's do something now. So I let prayers. Buki play the keyboard. It was in Riazas. Riazas was from 4.30 to 6.30. But at 10 o'clock, nobody could stand in Riazas into Sunday morning. The weight of God had come into the meeting. So, uh, I used to call him my cousin. He's from here, so you know he's not my cousin. Uncle Stephen. So Uncle Stephen now said, ah, how do we finish this Riaza. We, we didn't know if we should share grace because we didn't want to. It was too delicate. So he just announced this Riaza has officially finished. When God is done with you, you can go home. Some people were there till 12. Some people slept back. So we woke up on Sunday morning. It wasn't this, a special service. It was a regular service. So we went and we sang a regular song. Maybe one of those um, Fred Hammond song, maybe Living Word or one of those songs, or Give Me a Clean Heart. You know, Give Me a Clean Heart. When we finished, the deacon that came, I remember was Deacon Baba, he's also from Obama Show, but his name is Baba now. He's, he has, he's in Niger State, indigenous now. He held the microphone and said, It's just one question he has Where did the choir go to? And Dickie Baba is a spiritual man. I still met him this year. Baba was not saying, did we go to Kagara or go to uh, Kotangura? What he was asking was, what dimension did you come from on this Riaza? That life was sustained for almost about six weeks until a fight broke up in the choir. Some people want fear that they should start leading song. Are you the only one that will be leading song? That's what fractured the presence. You know why? Because it, that request tampered with the holiness of the atmosphere. Somebody wanted to be seen. And so, the thing drifted. And it was a bad time I know the sequence of events in our church that time was a bad time. Because for many months we had, su we had suffered from a down, a slide spiritually. It was in the middle of that six weeks that a few of us received a body for the church and we began to come to church about four days every week to pray for three, three hours that spirit life will come. Immediately that our presence team fractured. Some church elders came and said, this boy is praying. They want to scatter the church. So they disbanded our group. And two weeks later, death struck. It first took out a whole family. They are indigenous of Obumosh. They were coming for a wedding. The man died. His wife died. The daughter died. The son died. The wife didn't die until about five days. They found out that she was almost, she was about eight months pregnant. It was not, it was, it was bones. They have, they, they, if they, they, the car had an accident and they were all roasted the man's younger sister and the fiance and the fiance were also in the car both of them died so at least at basic principles we had six coffins that we buried what was sent to preserve us had been fractured with self 
the boy is still alive. I don't know where he is, but he's still alive. While we're trying to manage that, in our church we had about four senior lawyers. One became very ill. And while we're trying to focus on him that he will not die, another one traveled and pop, death took him. While we're mourning him, we had another senior lawyer from the east, pop, that one too died. All the deaths happened in a space of like 28 days. When we began to pray against death, then another plague hit our church and that one lasted. Did that one even touch me? He touched me. Because he, he, he touched the family that I had bound myself to. Then we saw marriages break with ease. People who were dedicated to God started chasing women and then people started divorcing and divorcing. What, what kind of strange thing is this? God knew what was coming. But that which was sent to preserve us was not understood. People felt that singing well is what creates the presence. They did not know that it is self-created and that there, if there is one thing to maintain in the presence of God is to ensure that the consecration is not tampered with holiness. The families that didn't fully break before we left school eventually break, broke. Thank God for church as at the last time I went. But even with all that we did, I am not sure if what visited us during, during that time had ever visited us again. The average man who has touched the intensities of the presence of God has become a storyteller because it is rarely preserved. Rarely. There are, there are few times when people have been able to keep it consistently. The enemy always uses self to tamper with the presence. It was the same old trick. Eve struck out in disobedience because she wanted to be something that God had not established them to be. I want to feel myself that I'm like God. It was tampered with. Maybe that's why he stopped coming to your Bible study. Maybe that's why he stopped coming to your prayer meeting. And instead of showers, what you now have is mercy drops. My time is up. And the rain has stopped, right? So we want to bow down our heads and pray an exit prayer. Let the person who is to do announcements come forward. Lord, show me your holiness. That's the only cry. Show me your holiness. Show me your holiness. Show me your holiness. Show me your holiness. Let me see what you look like. Let me see that aspect of your existence that you jealously defend. Show me your holiness. Oh, they go more kalasino venabarati sutekai. Come. Show me your holiness, Lord. Show me your holiness. Let there be a cry from your heart tonight that Lord will reveal himself to you in his holy dimension. Can a believer be sincere tonight with the Lord and ask the Lord to show you his holiness? It's a cry from my heart tonight, oh God, that you will show me your holiness. I want to see it. I want to behold it. I want to embody it. I want to experience it, oh God. I want to experience it, oh God. Show me your holiness. Show me your holiness, Father. Show me your holiness. Expose my soul to your holy dimension. Expose my soul to your holy dimension. I want to behold the beauty of your holiness. I want to behold the splendor of your holiness. I want my soul to be saturated with your holiness, oh God. Show me your holiness. Show me your holiness. Expose my soul, oh God. I want to behold the beauty of your holiness. I want to behold the beauty of your holiness. I want to behold the beauty of your holiness. I want to behold the beauty of your holiness. I want to behold the beauty of your holiness. 
Show me, Father. Show me tonight. Let the journey start from tonight, oh God. The journey, oh God, into showing that you expose my soul day in day out to your holiness. To the end that I am born, the all that there is, oh God. To the end that I am born, the oh God, the dimension of your holiness. That the beauty of your holiness, oh God, will be my experience day in day out. Show me your holiness. Show me your holiness. Show me your holiness. Show me.